before we actually get into the topic, whatever it is that you're disagreeing with me about. The other thing was just a little, you know, well, there's two of them, but maybe I'll just mention one. So just a little correction from last time. So you remember when I represented your argument in propositional logic, and then you told me on Twitter that the argument couldn't be represented in propositional mm -hmm. logic and required deontic logic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so surely you're going to agree that you contradicted yourself when you came onto the stream with the argument represented in propositional logic, right? Sorry, what, what stream? Um, when you and I talked, you called it like the ask yourself debate the great ask yourself oh right yeah no but i was trying to do that uh i was showing internal in, con i i took basically i tried to be charitable and i said okay well let's even assume that this is the way in which you would present the argument because it isn't i mean it's a deontic wait um, but the the argument you no, no no let's go and look at that stream okay because what you did last time was you came with the argument and we represented it in propositional logic. Right, <laughs> right. So unless... because, I, because in order to have a discussion, I didn't want to have a discussion with you about logical form. Do you, so I said, do well, you... let's just put that aside and let us so... just assume for right now that the argument you've represented Okay, let's is look it up. Let's just look it up. Ask yourself, Ram, great debate. Is that what you called it? Something like that. Okay, here we go. Great ask yourself debate. And here you have the argument written up in propositional logic. Right. right? And I've so just are you telling me, so just, just be, is that, is your write-up inaccurate? Strictly speaking, yes. Okay. If you but grant I, but that. But I, I, I said that. And, right, what I, is, and what is inaccurate about it exactly? That, that, that the way that the original position is formulated is that they are deontic propositions. They're telling about what someone ought to do. And so they can't really be represented in propositional calculus. Um, and I said that. I, I said see, that at the time. I, I said I that when I, I reviewed your video. Wait, wait. I said it no, on no, Twitter. Once, wait, wait a second. One second. These uh, these propositions absolutely can be represented in propositional logic. The, look, let's go one by one. The epistemic anti-realist is right. Can that be represented as P? Uh, let me pull it up again. I mean, I, I do you want? Do you yeah, know what logical well, form is? I just Rem, I'm not. I'm not going into that with you. No, but no, I, I, I just no, want this, simple, this is really what I want. This is, I want hold on, no, hold no, on, hold Rem. On. Wait, wait, no, no. We want an honest conversation, okay? Right, please. and I'm trying to have an honest I'm, conversation, so I need okay, to determine. But, but you're, do, you're, do, look. I asked I'm not you dodging the question. Okay, well, let's just be clear about what the question is. You said the argument couldn't be represented in propositional logic. You represented the argument in propositional logic. Now, what I want to do is go through every proposition in the argument and you tell me which one can't be represented with a propositional variable just straightforwardly using propositional logic and unless you can do that i just want you to admit you contradicted yourself okay so oh, i didn't let's... contradict myself okay so okay so i just want to go one by one can the epistemic anti-realist is right be represented let me pull by up P? my uh Rim. post i'm pulling up the actual argument so i can see it i'm i'm pulling up what you brought on stream i what you were chalkboarding so i'm going to copy paste that and i'm going to put it into um general Sorry. yeah just one just second PM me? um i don't want to open up our dms on stream but okay. i'm gonna open i'm gonna give you a role it'll give you access to a private channel just one second okay um rem role um what's that fucking role called um visitor of the realm okay you should see a channel called realm of ay just go in there and i'll post this for you um one second, I just have to find it. Should I Jake Elman OP? Sorry, what's it Q called? R. Uh, it's it's just the text channel with the voice channel that we're in right now. It's called the Realm yes, of AY. Yes, I see it. Yes. Okay, so this is what you wrote here. Okay, so and and Rem, this is like not like the main issue is right. presumably just to be clear, the main issue is presumably something you have about my meta ethics or normative ethics or something. So obviously, I want to get to that. I, this is just a trivial little point where you absolutely contradicted yourself, and I just want you to admit it. So no, and I'm trying to explain to you why well, well, I did well, wait, it, so Ram, can I explain the, to the, it? One, one second. If every proposition here can be represented, <laughs> if this argument can be represented accurately in propositional logic, then you you did contradict yourself because you said that's not the case. So, okay, let's, so just, let's just go through the propositions. Okay, can, okay. I, ex can I explain what, to you? After, after Are you going to let me ask? After, Rem. Well, no, okay. because I can't answer the questions look, for you without the prefacing it. Look, the epistemic anti-realist is right. That can be represented by P, correct? Uh, so, I, yes, no, but right. can I explain yeah. to you what the Wait, caveat is here? After, yes, after. So well, that, there's no okay, point in going there, through this. 
Yeah, yes, well, we're going to go through it. There are no epistemic reasons for belief. Can well, that be represented by well, REM? Let's skip this, and I REM, will tell you, no, everything can be represented what, uh, in propositional logic in okay, a technical so sense. But so, can I... So there, wait, wait, wait. Uh, I just want to be clear. So this argument, every proposition in the argument can be represented uh, with a propositional is, variable. Oh what God. REM, one second. And every operator can be represented with just a standard operator in propositional logic, right? Okay. So what's what your point? Can, if can that's I... the case, if that's the case, then the representation in propositional logic is accurate. No, it's not because of the fact of lot. It, it doesn't match the logical form of the argument. And this is what I'm trying to explain to you. So if you that, let me just, can you, if you so let me, I, if... I need, I need to be, yes, you can, but I need to be clear. <sighs> is, is the argument what's written in text there? No, it's not. No, that's the, that's, okay. that's, that's why it's not. Okay. So the explain correct logical what the, form. Uh, okay. No, no, that's, that's reasonable if there's actually a different argument. So what is different between what you have written here and the argument as it is supposed to actually. Okay. So as I was saying, and as I have mentioned a few times here, this, this screenshot here is what I made, um, basically granting you, well, let's even just suppose that it can be correctly represented in propositional logic and that is actually the logical form of the proposition because wait, no, hold on no, can didn't. i finish that's not can no, i please that's finish not true wait oh, that's not gosh. true though rem you had this same i can't, I can't even finish a sentence rem. for you as well okay well let, we'll just answer this okay did you not have the same write-up in that video that you made prior to this right. the video you made about me and again, as I always have with these types of discussions, I preface it by being, in a sense, charitable to you because I don't want to have the side discussion with you, which we need to have right now, about logical form because it's a very difficult subject to talk about. So I basically just grant you that we can represent the logical form of these propositions in propositional logic and just examine the actual propositions themselves. That's what I do. Because it's simpler that way, even though there is that objection to be made and the a correct objection, I believe, that these propositions are best represented in deontic logic, because strictly speaking, we're talking about like high level meta ethical propositions that are ultimately going to be reduced to norms and the way that someone ought to act not merely just descriptions about the world. And so it is absolutely true that you can represent anything in propositional logic. So for example, the statement that um, it is necessary that the laws of gravity behave the way that they do. I can mm -hmm. represent that as P, right? But that is not the logical form of that sentence. The proper yeah, logical form of that sentence a is a mo logic. Exactly. Yes, it's a modal logic. This, but, but wait. So but how do you not look, see that but... that is the exact same thing here, but with the ontic logic? Because what you've done here, I'm looking at a video that you released on August. Are you ignoring 15th, what I've said here about about prefacing these things by saying I'm well, basically just, just granting to, well, it to you, but, and I've said this so many you, times? Why would, you, why would why would you be granting me a form in propositional logic at this date before we ever talked about the argument in propositional logic? Like you're just lying. Why are you lying? Oh my, so you so you. Okay, what, what am look, I lying look. about exactly? Okay, well, look, this video, was, unless, unless you're going to explain to somehow rationalize this for me, this video was on August 15th, 2018. It's called Why Ask Yourself and His Position Are Dumb. If you go to 701, you have this argument typed up in a way that would be directly, directly convertible. Into what, can you, can you link me to the video? Yes, and I'll give you a timestamp, Rem. So it's in that same channel. Now, what you have, this is before I ever represented your argument. And I, and I have done it, and I've converted it to propositional form in here. Where? In, at um, four, well, at four well, wait, minutes. Wait, wait, wait. Well, no, no, I'm saying what you have written here, which is presumably an accurate representation of your argument. What, what, what time? Directly, what, oh, it's at 7.01. Right? So you are I've using... never converted it to propositional logical form. Yeah, I, I, what are you talking about? Yeah, so it's not... This isn't rem, written in propositional rem, calculus. Wait, hello, one second. Okay, so you don't have the variables written out, but the form is directly convertible into propositional. Again, so is any modal statement. Every modal statement is convertible into propositional, okay, so, but that is not the logical form. What Can you explain? Okay, what do you so think logical what, so, form so, is? So just, well, well, wait, just tell me one second. I'm not getting derailed by you. What do you think here requires something other than propositional logic? Just tell me the proposition. I explained this to you because we okay, are dealing... Wait. 
Yeah, you're which, a, which specific proposition? Can I answer, can I answer I, the yeah, question? Yeah, I understand, Rem, that kind of like with modal logic, when you use words like necessity and possibility, you want operators for those words. I want to know what word in here you think you need a separate operator for. B basically all of them. Uh, because these are what? these are statements about how someone ultimately ought to have. Because when someone has an epistemic reason, reasons are normative, are always judged relative to someone's set of norms, okay, right? So, let's, so just take the, let's just take the first premise, okay? The first premise I would represent as P implies Q, okay? How would you represent it? Um, I think that that one you could represent in, in propositional calculus, yes. Okay. And the second one? Uh, that looks like if there are no categorical reasons and there's, that looks like Q implies R, right? What, so how would you represent? Um, I would say, uh, I'm trying what's the best way to do this in logic? So. Ah, right. Okay. So it's under three when someone says, but there are epistemic reasons. No, uh, for wait, we're, talk we're just talking about two right now. Right. Yeah. No, no. So, so let's grant one and two as prop propositional logic. Okay. But when I say that there are epistemic reasons for belief, that is an, a deontic claim. It's about the way that someone ultimately ought to have, ought to stand relationally to this concept of beliefs. So and this is a necessary claim about the way that someone actually ought to act. It is not a it's not a descriptive claim about how, the world. How would how would you represent that? Uh, depends what kind of deontic logic you would want to use, I guess. Um, I could pull one up for you. Um, yeah, I just want to I just want to know what you actually like. I don't because I don't understand why we couldn't just represent it in propositional logic or well, why, no, or why the reason that. I was, well, the, sorry, I understand. That, yeah, that's not you can, but you consider it less accurate. I just want to know exactly. what is lost that's here it. exactly. Yeah, I just want to understand what's lost. What's lost is the fact that we're talking about moral odds. We're not well, talking well, about well, a wait, state of but, affairs but, in the world. What I, but what I want you to do with three is I just want you to show me how you'd represent it. And right, then, that's what I'm doing. You know, I, okay, and then we'll just see what's lost. So you could, if you want to, do like a very basic traditional scheme of, of deontic logic. I guess you do. It is obligatory that... Uh, fuck, I've lost the... Um, if an agent holds belief, uh, I don't know. But, there's many ways that I could represent this for you. Do you just want well, like anyone? Well, well, wait. It just it just seems like. You, I don't understand why the sentence "there are epistemic reasons for belief" would have to be converted into deontic logic. Because, right? Like, if this is what I was trying to explain to you: is that the reason why it's important to frame this in the correct way in deontic logic is because we're not talking about a descriptive state of the world. We are talking about the way that agents actually ought to act and ought to consistently act in the world. Right. That that's why it's important to frame it in deontic logic. And that's why I thought it was that why I ultimately think it's incorrect to reduce the logical form of some of these propositions down to propositional logic. Wait, but this premise doesn't say something about ways actors should act. It just says there yes, are it epistemic does. That, reasons for belief. What do you think epistemic reasons are? They're reasons. The, the, when I have a reason for doing something, this is a, this is always going to be judged relative to some set of normative standards. That's that's how we judge, you know, this is basic tenet in like philosophy of action. Okay. It's a normative. I, okay. Now I, I, I just can't see why you would have a pro like why you would say it's uh any less accurate to represent it in propositional logic. I don't I don't get it. You know, it doesn't make any sense to me. So you're gonna have to just keep explaining that if you wanna persuade me of it. What I, I don't under what, you what do you not think is correct, sorry? I just don't understand what you think you're gaining by representing it like that, other than not having to tell me that you contradicted yourself. Well, I, again, I've explained this to you, that if we are talking, actually, yes, one is, one is, uh, oh, Bollier, I think you are right. I think you're right that proposition, or pre premise one is also, should also be represented uh, deontically as well. And that's true. Someone else points out that three is, is not descriptive unless you're an internalist. That's a good point. Okay, so we could reframe one as well if we wanted. Actually, I think ultimately correctly we have to reframe Wait, it because we would say I that just... if someone is 
an anti-realist about morality, then they necessarily are obligated to. Yeah, but that's not what you have in text. So it's well, no. It's okay. Hold on. You, stop talking about you, text. It doesn't. This is natural language. Okay? Yeah, these I'm, are natural I'm, language I'm statements. Talking, We've reduced I'm it to its about, logical form. I'm talk, Rem. I'm talking about if the natural language that you have written is directly convertible into propositional logic, and if that accurately represents what's being said. Right. That's logical to form, me, and it's not because you miss the fact that we are talking about what agents ought to do. Well, wait, right. but you're but those are things that you bring in when you start. You have it. Okay. You know what? Look, let's. It just seems to me like I can't tell what you're getting out of adding, out of trying to represent it in some other logic. It's not I've clear to me to you. why it, you, because okay, it makes well, it, it not, makes it I don't clearer. Accept your, uh, it makes well, it, no, no, no. The thing that it makes clearer would be an argument written differently in natural language that uses those kind of words. Right? Well, no, because that's not how logical form necessarily functions. I mean, if you've read Russell, like that's the entire theory of description. Right. Well, uh, like look. a proper name. Look, look, a proper name like, you know, Plato can, according to Russell and a ton of philosophers, be written as there exists an object x such that if x is right and that doesn't at all match our natural language but the whole point of logical form is that we're trying to ultimately determine what is going to be best representing our structure of thought um and the logic that we're using therein when we are utilizing our natural language so the grammatical form of our natural language statements do not necessarily and certainly do not actually uh, represent the true logical form. So pointing out that grammatically it's not functioning as a deontic statement is just a completely moot point because that's not the way that logical form ultimately operates. And I think okay, every philosopher of language would agree with that. Let's just be clear. So when you said the argument couldn't be represented in propositional logic, that was false. It can. You just think that the most accurate representation uses deontic logic. Well, sure, but I mean, okay. I, wait, that's that's fine. No, no, that's fine. That's admitting the contradiction, so that's good. That that that's not really um, a contradiction, though, because I guess in it, a sense it, it's, it's a bit of a yes. hyperbole. But it's like the same no, thing as no, saying, hold on, hold saying, on, hold no, on, it's hold rammed, on. Can rammed, I? Rammed. No, no, this is a contradiction. Saying it can't be represented in propositional logic. I don't know why you're having to do this gotcha stuff because it's very clear what it's, I'm saying here. A, what I'm saying here is not absurd. No, Rem. Look, it's fine if you want to say it can accurately be represented. It so can be you, represented, well, but it's represented incorrectly. Yeah, I guess I'm not sold on that. I don't I don't understand how it's inaccurate. Beca oh, I've just explained this to you because this this is saying what agents ought to do. We bring in normativity. We bring in what agents ultimately ought to do on a day to day basis, functioning as cognitive now, agents. It's now, not about the description now, of the world. Now I can't and now so I can't remember now I can't now I can't remember your exact quote. But if you didn't use the word accurately in that quote, you contradicted yourself. If you said this can't be represented in propositional logic, then you've contradicted yourself, right? We can just dig up the quote later. One of us is going to be right about what it says. Maybe yeah, you're right. If it, okay, yeah, no, yeah. no, but but even, like even if I didn't say accurately, it simply wouldn't matter because if I give you another example, when I say um, uh, it Why is absolutely hold on, hold on. It, it is necessary yes that all no. dogs have four legs, right? Rem, and I say to that, Rem, I'm, ex I'm explaining Rem, to you why that is not an absurd you're not conclusion. Answering. You're not answering, though. Look, if it turns out that your tweet said this argument can't be represented in propositional logic, it's and not a, it can, then that's, then, look, Rem, that is a contradiction. It's implied. It's a, it's a natural implication of that statement that it's okay, not, when the, I, even because I don't include the word uh, accurately, it doesn't mean that it's a contradiction. It just means that you're not okay, being charitable now, to what I'm saying. Now that, it means that, that you're just behaving in bad faith. Now, that statement interpreted literally, right, without adding in what you're trying to throw, I think you're operating in bad faith by trying to, like, <laughs> rationalize your statements after the fact, but it's fine, okay? I don't even fucking but care. But I've it's literally stuff. said how many times Rem, about the deontic stop, form of these just statements. Just stop. Just stop dude fuck okay now look <laughs> if if what you said was that the argument can't be represented in propositional logic and it can right that's a contradiction can you just say yes or no sorry can you repeat that i was if you said the argument can't be represented in propositional logic and it can that's a contradiction right um i can't ultimately know because what is meant by me oh, saying so can, can, can you I no, respond no, no, no i'm not no i'm not asking you to do some fucking hermeneutics on your language rem i'm asking about the exact proposition that is written there, okay? If you, look, are these statements a contradiction, Rem? It's the case that this argument can be represented in propositional logic. It's not the case that this uh, argument can be represented in propositional logic. Is that a contradiction? Um, in a certain sense, yes, but we have in to be In a certain charitable. sense? 
Rem, that's P and not P. That is a contradiction. That's just saying proposition and negation, right? What do you mean in a certain sense? Of course, that's a contradiction. It's just straightforward. It's a contradiction in the sense that, I mean, if we were talking about the actual, like, propositional content of my statement, it would be. But again, if we're being charitable to what I was saying, and just as the way that natural language ultimately functions at the end of the day, uh, we recognize that, you know, sometimes someone might drop a word, but the meaning of that statement is still going to get across to people. Right. And but basically Ram, everyone that I've discussed always, to, hold you, on, can I, can, can I please finish my no, sentence? No, because no, you can I always, can't finish, this is so, I literally yeah, can't finish a single Ram, sentence Yeah, because this is, because this is Weasley, okay? Anyone really? can always, after the fact, yeah, anyone can always, after the fact, go, oh, I meant this and this and that, okay? You can always right, I agree with that, but that, that, but that's but why we, it's so we, vital long, that I long, constantly have long, talked about the deontic long, form of As long as we understand, as long as we understand that the actual words that were typed on Twitter were contradicted, that's fine with me. Do you understand that? Okay, so for that that robot who can only interpret things literally and has for no the, understanding for, for of person, social norms person, and social communication, for the who just uh, read I agree. Your tweet. For the person well, no, who because just the average your tweet. I've never had anyone why have do you, an issue why with do this. You, why do you You're assume the first person. that someone would, Rem, why do you assume that someone would read the word accurately into that? Now, if you actually typed the word accurately, which you might have, then I'll grant it's down to my bad memory. But if you didn't type the word accurately, I have no clue why you would assume that someone would read that into what you're saying. Now, I don't know why this is so fucking hard to acknowledge, okay? If the proposition- It's, a, it's, it's hard to acknowledge because you're just trying to win a really pointless I'm debate. just pointing out a contradiction, Rem. If to you what say- end? Because I want to clarify it, obviously. I said and I've I want clarified to clarify with you, and I've, and I've clarified with you my intention of it, and I've right, pointed right. you where so I've what, talked about the right. So what you're doing is something anyone can always do. You're performing hermeneutics on what you said in order to say, oh, it actually isn't a contradiction, right? But if we interpret what you've said literally, it's a contradiction, right? Just say yes or no, okay? If we interpret what you said literally... What does hermeneutics do mean? If we interpret, don't try to derail. If we I'm interpret just what, what you think you it said, means. if we interpret what you said literally, is it a contradiction? Yes if, or no. If we completely yes or no, yes I'm answer, or no. I'm I, don't, I don't want. I don't want any preamble. I Rem. promise. I if, Rem, no because I <laughs> if if we represent what you said, if we take it literally, right? If we just look at what you said literally, we're gonna get a contradiction. Yes or no, Rem. Can I add a? Yes can I add or a, no. Wait, can I add? Rem. Can I say? No, can I, wait, wait. No, I'm I will not answer. I promise. Rem, I'll I'm answer. Not, I'm not interested in your fucking weaseling. <laughs> no, no, no. Can I answer yes or no and then no, end it yeah. with something? Yes, you can. Yeah, that's fine. Thank Just you. Give me a yes okay. No so I'll say no. yes, comma. Thank you. Comma. Thank you. If you are a robot who doesn't understand. Uh, context and who just completely ignores the charitability of someone else's arguments. Right. So we understand that if we interpret it literally as a robot it, having no capability it. of looking at the context yeah, of the situation. Yeah, because 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 <laughs> Rem, someone should somehow read the word um uh, what what was the the word you said accurately? Someone should assume that the word accurately is contained in the sentence. It's What's so your robotic. Favorite book? To, What's your favorite so, piece of it's literature? So, it's so it's so robotic to see the sentence. This can't be represented in propositional logic and assume that they're not talking about accurate representation. Like it's it's like what are you talking about? It's just this can't be. Well, represented. you're the first person that's ever had an issue with this. I've never everyone under everyone else yeah. understood what well, I meant by that tweet except we, you. I think we 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 clear. Well, that's your assertion, right? But we clarified it. If we interpret it literally. You contradicted yourself. Okay, so if we let's interpret move it along, like a robot right? who ignores context, yeah. But if if we if we inter if we interpret it fucking like literally, a robot. Right? right? Yeah, but Look, but we Rem, but that's not the way that that's not the way that natural Rem. language functions. We don't interpret everything Rem. literally. Rem, Can you acknowledge we, that? Uh, look, look, I don't, I don't care. As long as you are granting, which you clearly are, that if we interpret it literally, it's a contradiction. Now you try to save yourself by saying like a robot. I think that's false because I don't see any reason why a human would assume the word accurately should be in the sentence. Because of right? the context of which it was tweeted. Right. Well, I don't think that context makes it obvious at all. But the point is, you've acknowledged that the literal writing gives a contradiction. That's fine. So now let's move along. Okay. Now. The other thing I wanted to bring up was just the dog wait, wait, whistle. Wait, wait, can I, 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 we'll go on to this, but what, have you studied any philosophy of language before? Rem, I'm not listening to your I, I'm just saying, it's just a question. Not, it's just I a question. Rem, I, look, you asked me a bunch of questions. Can I ask no, you a question? No, Rem, listen, you know what, you know what I'm not down for, okay? What I'm not down for are your slimy, slimy fucking tactics, okay? Rem, What's the what tactic? I'm, I'm not here, I'm, I'm not. Rem, what, Rem, hello, okay. Why can't what you I'm charitable to, to me? I'm not trying to do a gotcha. I'm here, what I'm here to do with you 
is to go over my position and see what propositions I believe that are false, okay? I am so fucking done with your slimy, slimy tactics, okay? Where what you do is you try to go, oh, have you read this? Have you read that? Look, Rem, if I believe something false, fucking spell out the false belief, okay? All you're trying to do is posture. It's so infuriating. I'm not trying to posture. Yes, I, leg I legitimately have a question with you. I want to give you advice. Rem, Rem you, are, you are such a liar, okay? Destiny called you a liar too, right? Which I'm did not he? surprised. I'm not surprised. When right? did he call me a liar? In that big stream with you. Doesn't it literally say liar in the thumbnail? Call me a liar. Doesn't it say liar in the thumbnail or something? Here, I'll just look at it. Or are up. you talking about the Bolivia one? Yeah, let's just look. Destiny. Do you, do you disagree with me? Do you want to talk about Bolivia with me? No, I do not. I do not. Not even, Excuse me. I am not, here to talk to you, not, ask yourself, about something not, very specific. Not, and you're on remotely, here talking about a completely even, separate not, thing. Even, I'm tired even, with your slimy not even, tactics, not ask even, yourself. Not it's completely even, slimy. Not even, not Stop even, going off topic. Not even, not even remotely. The title of the stream says you're such a liar. Why are we talking about this? Ask yourself. It's completely well, no, unrelated the to the reason, discussion. The reason the reason that we're talking about it is because you keep trying to derail from the discussion. Uh, you're derailing Rem, right look, now. Look, Rem, let me. Uh, okay, so I'm going to. I don't want to. Let's get back to the topic at hand. I don't, I don't want to have to use priority push to talk, but no, Rem. I'm <laughs> That's why I'm in your going, server. I'm That's why to, you wouldn't do a private call. To, with I'm me. going to. I'm. Yeah, I, no, Ram, I'm in a private call because I use the fucking voice widgets. Okay? No, no, you're in a voice chat, not a private you, call. If you, if you, or sorry, in a, yeah, you're right. But if don't threaten to use watch, priority call, watch, just leave the call. Oh, Ram, oh my fucking god, you're so infuriating. Just shut up, okay? Now, look, the reason why I'm going for a moment into the meta, why I'm calling you a liar, and why I'm pointing out your slimy tactics, is because you'll sit there gradually using those little slimy tactics throughout the debate, right? You'll keep throwing out these little Why can jabs, you do it, but I can't? Ram, shut the fuck up, okay? Listen to me, right? Now, the reason that I'm bringing it up is because you'll sit there throughout this whole conversation making these slimy moves, okay? You'll sit there implying... You know, oh, ask yourself is fucking illiterate, ask yourself this, ask yourself that, right? All, always trying to appeal to authority, always trying to cast the other guys if they don't know something. And all of that is just posturing, right? It's not actually explaining what propositions I believe that are false, okay? The reason that I'm bringing that up is just to diffuse that tactic, okay? If you hear Rem posturing and talking shit, you should always ask yourself, okay, ask yourself... What is the actual proposition that he's saying the other guy believes that's false? Okay, so I'm just diffusing that tactic by pointing out that I don't care about your little appeals to authority, etc. I care if you can show that I believe something that is false. Okay, now the third topic was just the dog whistle thing. And I'm sure you can agree about this, okay? I went and looked up the term after, and it does have uh, connotations of there's like bigotry or something about it when you say dog whistle. Now this Wait, was... are we still going? Yeah, now this was obviously just a completely... Like, like, I mean, it's a slightly different topic, but obviously this is just, wait, oh, are you saying that because you had me muted when I explained that? No, I did not have you muted. Are you lying? I am not lying. I did not have you muted. I promise. If you're lying, that's very, very fucking shitty behavior. I, I did not I'm, mute you. Okay, well, I'm just going to repeat what I said in case you did, okay? So okay. all I pointed out is that what you will do throughout the conversation is you'll say little things, to, and it, they gradually add up. They, they to try to gradually build this image that the other guy is fucking stupid, right? Now, I ignore these a lot of the time, but when you do it enough times, I just get infuriated, and I have to say something about it, okay? You try to go, you know, imply, oh, you haven't read this, you don't understand this, you don't understand that, but they're all just cheap shots, and all they're geared towards doing is making it seem like you have deeper knowledge than the other person. It doesn't actually mean that you're explaining anything false that they think. So whenever you guys hear Rem do that, just ask yourself, what is he actually saying the other guy believes that's false? That's all I wanted to say, okay? And please stop doing that shit, and let's just talk. So if you're allowed to derail, can I say something about your behavior? Yeah, sure, go Well, it's not about your behavior, but I, seriously, I just wanted to ask you, in philosophy of language, as you've gone back to university for philosophy, haven't you? No, I'm not in university right now. I'm upgrading courses and going into university. Are you going to take philosophy? Yeah, I am going to take some philosophy. Which area are you going to? Well, I mean, I'm just going to, well, okay. So I have a big interest in logic, obviously. I wanted to go to, well, we're going to get derailed. I wanted to go to U of T because they have so much good logic there, but the living cost is just insane. So what I think I'm going to do out here I is go to philosophy and math. You go to U of T? Yeah, yes, well, I have... do. I, I, I 
I specialize in philosophy of logic and philosophy of language with the professors here. Right. So, but you see, you see what you're doing right now. That is a little rem cheap shot, right? Maybe I should just call them out when you do them. That's what we'll do from now on. Okay. So what you're doing is just implying, right? You're trying to cast an image of ask yourself as an idiot. And I am a respectable intellectual no, no, who is no, no, involved no, no. with can professors. Can I explain why I made that comment? Because I can understand why you <laughs> yeah, believe you, it like that. I'm responding specifically to a comment that you made in a video where you said that I probably have never even taken a logic course before. And I've only ever taken philosophy 101. That is why I made that comment. I don't think I said anything about philosophy oh, 101, yes, but did. I did. Oh, I, yeah, you implied that I'd never really taken a real philosophy logic course. I don't, I don't think I, 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 I uh, well, I, now I, I highly doubt I said that about philosophy because I've known you're a philosophy student for a long time. I think I did say that about logic because of something you said. I don't remember what it was, right. but and I understand that's the area that I study. Course. Yeah, but that's I why I made just, that comment. Yeah, but yeah, but if I say something false, right? If I say like I don't think this guy's ever taken logic, and you say, you know, I've actually taken a bunch of logic course, they'll just say that was wrong, right? Some so of us can don't just don't do that as error. posturing. Do that as me. I'm getting a little bit of revenge for a comment that I think was very unfair to make. Um, I don't know. I mean, I view it as revenge instead of posturing. I guess we'll just see how many times you do that kind of stuff throughout the conversation. Okay. Right. Okay. So let's continue. All right. So. We've been through, what, two things now. So the first thing was just about etiquette, okay? So all I was saying is I try to talk to someone if I can before making videos, and if we can't, you know, if we can't get agreement, then I make a video. I would ask you to do the same. You don't have to. The second thing was just about the contradiction. We understand that the actual literal written word is a contradiction. You think that I'm interpreting it robotically. I don't. Okay. Okay. And then the third thing is just this dog whistle term. Uh, I think that like surely this isn't going to be a fucking battle. I hope to God. Okay. You said that that term has no connotations about like bigotry or like racism or what whatever. Term? The term dog whistle. I looked it up after. It does. Like you can find tons of definitions that Wait, make reference. I have no idea what you're talking about right now. It's just a little point. It's just no, a little no, what thing point that was when? said. I I I legit, I'm, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, uh, sometime in the last conversation we had, um, you uh, you used the term dog whistle, and I objected to it and said like you're implying weird things about me. And I think you just didn't know that the word has those like connotations. And we kind of disagreed. And I said I'd look it up, so I, I did. Oh, yeah, I I I can barely remember last week. I have no idea. Okay, but like we understand that term does have those kind of connotations, or do, do we can dictionary it fast if we want to? But surely we understand that, right? Uh, okay. Okay. All right. So what is it that you actually disagree with me about? Because so far, oh, 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 and there's one other thing that sorry, one other I want to clear up. Now, that last discussion we had, you've been sort of like lording this around as if you like destroyed me and converted my uh, changed my beliefs, right? I want you to tell me because I'm not aware of a single belief that was changed in that conversation. What proposition do you think that I changed my attitude about during that conversation? Well, it's not really a proposition, but it's a general metaphilosophical view that... Ooh. Sorry, let me clarify. Right. So I'm asking what belief I changed, right? So I just take a belief to be a propositional attitude. Do you have pro a problem with that understanding of a belief? Yeah, because when we're operating in such of like a high... Because, I mean, it, there's no... You're, you're assuming a very specific concept of belief. But when we're dealing in metaphilosophy, we sort of have to throw all that out and it has to become sort of more informal. And it's just general methodological attitudes uh, towards philosophy that we discuss. So it's, it's a bit Wait, strange. To... Okay, well, let's just be clear. Is there actually a proposition that I changed my attitude towards that you can cite? I just explained to you why that doesn't make sense. Oh, I just want you to answer it. Just give an answer. I, how can I answer a meaningless question? You think it's a meaningless question? Well, yeah, because I, I, and I just explained you, to you wait, why. Wait, do you not, do you not, sorry. Wait, wait, can you how explain can you, to me, wait, wait, just, how to, can, just to see. Hold how, on, let me wait, just ask you something. Wait, let me no, ask you no, something. No, because no, you're, because oh, you're not man. answering, Rem. You can ask me after you oh. answer. I hate when you try to do that. Like, just answer and then ask your shit, okay? Is, can you actually point to any proposition that I changed my attitude about from that conversation? It's a, it's again, it's like asking me, are. Can you just answer? This is so unfair. Give your yourself. clarification after you answer. No, but what, th this look, is what look, I don't I like. Just, 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 because you try just, to do all these oh gotchas. Why can't we have a civil Rem, discussion? I, I'm happy with you taking your time to explain your answer after. I just want you to start with a straightforward yes or no answer, okay? Some yes. answers don't have a yes or no question. You, you don't think that you can tell me if you're aware of Correct. a proposition that I changed my attitude about? 
Correct, really? because yes, and, so and then I can, not... and I explain why, right? Can I explain why? Wait, no, no, no. I want to talk about that for a second. Right, that's what I'm so, trying to do because you're at you're like, oh, how can you possibly believe no, it? So no, now I'm trying to explain just, to you why. It's just oh, you're so annoying, dude. Just stop. Fuck. Now look, just answer clearly, okay? Are you aware, yes or no, of a proposition that I changed my attitude towards in that conversation? I don't know. Okay, that's fine. That's a fine answer. Now, did you want to say something? <laughs> yeah, because it's sort of a meaningless question. Because when we're talking about metaphilosophy, you come in with a very specific notion of propositional content and of what it means for something to be a belief. I didn't, but talk, when about we're I didn't talk about content at all. I just said that beliefs are propositional attitudes. I didn't even talk about content. Right, so the content of a belief would be the propositional attitude. That's what I mean. And so, at the end of the day, because we are discussing... Wait, wait, such the, con the content of the belief would be the propositional attitude. No, that's not the content of it. That is what I'm taking the belief to be. A belief is a propositional attitude. It's not that the content of a belief is a right, propositional so the attitude. Extension that, that, would, of that, would be, that would be saying that the content of a belief is a belief. If propositional attitude means belief, then saying the content of a, of a proposition of a belief is a propositional attitude is just saying the content of a belief is a belief. Okay, be I stupid. think we're we're having a semantic confusion over what I mean by content. But setting that aside, okay, because we're at such an abstracted level of discussion in this metaphilosophical territory, I don't want to you know go use a very specific fine tune definition of proposition or whatnot when it's just not uh, conductive to the conversation when we can talk more broadly about a methodological attitude towards philosophy itself right? so okay now you've you've granted that you're not aware of any proposition that i changed my attitude towards are you well, aware of any attitude change of any type that took oh sure i added what do you mean by attitude like meth methodological I, I'm, approach I'm, look i'm just it's like if you say that I've changed my mind about something. Yeah. I just take it to be, there's like, I don't know what that could mean, except that there's some proposition that I used to have one attitude towards and now I have a different attitude towards it. I don't know what else it could mean to change my mind or to have a belief change. Well, no. So again, it's a, it's a change in method. Well, no, because there are some changes that someone undergoes that aren't necessarily changes in propositional attitudes i think but right so there's no change in belief there's a change in methodology is that right. what you're saying a, okay and what's the change that i've made in approach right and so you originally had this sort of axiomatic approach to all the philosophy that these things I, are i don't think i i don't think i was talking in that conversation i'm talking about in the course of the last conversation i right. had with yes and yes and so um you view things as well they're just ultimately all that matters is this sort of logical axiomatic structure that that's where what? every what what do you mean what that's a weird thing all that matters is this logical axiomatic structure that doesn't sound like a thing i would say you try to paint philosophy as just a, uh, as a system of log or of logical axioms from which everything else is necessarily Dude, going to follow. I'm I'm not clear about how exactly I do that. I think that there are things that we believe that we don't like. I don't know that I can like justify all of my beliefs. Like there's certain things that I just seem to believe, and I can't really give you a good reason for it. I, I'm sorry. I'm so can you? re-explain because remember you would always say well that's well, just an axiom in my system the thing well the thing that, that's what you'd say well, wait, all wait, the fucking yeah, time wait, wait, but but i don't want to i don't want to move off of the point we can talk about whatever it is in a second so well i'm at, i want to not, establish so it's what not the it's not that, that i've had. so it's not that i've actually changed my attitude towards any proposition you think that i not proposition changed, i'm not what? talking about propositions i said that Okay, well, it's not that it's sorry, but well, I mean, look, I just take beliefs to be propositional attitudes. I don't know. But what I'm not else talking about beliefs belief, either. But okay, well, look, if you grant that I haven't changed any beliefs, and you're saying that I changed some methodology thing, I don't really know what that is and how it could not involve a belief change. But yeah, I, I don't know what you think you've exactly changed my mind about on during that conversation. Also, attitudes uh, aren't necessarily I'm... beliefs. What I didn't know, I didn't say I didn't say attitudes are beliefs. I said proposition, a propositional attitude, so like an attitude of truth or falsity towards some proposition. I take that to be a belief. Okay, but that, that's, not, that's not that's not all the things that can be life. changed in someone's mind. It, yeah, I mean, there's obviously other things going on in a mind than beliefs. Why, like, what's the... I'm, I, look, so I'm not clear what you approach. think. 
and some somehow that's not made up of beliefs so what like i mean approach yeah like it sounds like a very vague thing to say you've changed my mind about i'm not clear why like i just don't understand what you think you changed my mind about can you just I, give that's me what I, that's what i was trying to explain to you here this is let's just let's do it like this okay my task for you after this stream is just to cite me something that i say in that conversation and then some and then where i later on say okay i don't believe that anymore so would, you, would you are you an episode do you believe that there are certain because maybe maybe i was mistaken right so let, let's get to the root of this do you believe okay that that epistemic statements have a have a necessary truth value um well when we got into all that language it seemed like you thought i was an epistemic realist in virtue of saying that i doubt that we can perceive a temporally right so if that if that belief tells you what you need to know then i have that belief oh i see right because the thing that frustrated so you me are is... an anti-realist well, I so you why were you getting mad at me framing one, you as such wait, on Destiny's stream? What, wait, 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 one sec, one second. That's one, one second. That's going to go into another topic. So just to be clear, like when you say like you change this or that, like I have no problem changing my mind. Okay, if you go look at like even the info channel, I have corrections in there, and I even credit the people who have you know said things. You've changed way. your mind yeah. five. I looked at it. You no, have the, five yeah, changes. The, wait, yeah, but those, it's not that I've only changed my mind five times. It's that if it's a thing that I've said publicly, if I've like spread it around, then I had a correction there. If I change my mind in private about something I haven't talked about, it doesn't like, you know, I don't necessarily post a correction. But the point I'm making is just, you know, I'm happy to make a correction, but I just don't like it when you go around making this framing. Like, you know, I've like, changed ask yourself and it's like i'm just have no idea what you're talking about like, i don't know what you think you've changed well again i thought that you like, were there, i thought that in that discussion you were acknowledging that there are certain necessary conditions for a human experience well um, what i granted what i granted i was very careful about what i granted i granted that i don't think that we can perceive a temporally that's what i said and you took that to mean that I'm an epistemic realist. Now, I don't care about how you use the language. If, if you think that qualifies me as an epistemic realist, then fine. Well, no, do you um, believe that but, that has but, a true or false, uh, do you think that that is a true or false statement? Yeah, it's a proposition. Of course, it has a fucking truth value. No, I'm asking, is it a true statement? That, wait, are you talking about the statement, I am, uh, I don't believe that um, we no, can perceive that, a time? Do you think that it is a necessary condition of the human experience that we perceive a temporally. And all you mean by necessary condition is that we can't do otherwise. As human beings. Well, that's the only, that's the only thing that matters. Yeah, I, I, I really doubt that we can perceive a temporally. Why, but why, do you think, do you why think are you there doing is... these doubts? What, it's a, it's an, if I'm because, making a necessary because I, I, because description. Because I, I wouldn't, because I'm not convinced that, you know, I don't know how I would argue that we can't. I just, uh, I just, you know, I can't picture how we could. I don't have the belief that we could. It seems fucking unlikely. Seems like things are pretty temporal around here. Well, I, but okay, so so you're open to the possibility that we could. Well, I mean, I, yeah, I can't think of like, I mean, I'm I'm kind of open to all possibilities. Like, I mean, okay, then it's just there's some there's some that I can't comprehend. Like, if you tell me there's a square circle, it's like you know maybe somehow there's a square circle, but I can't even understand what you're talking about when you say square circle. Um, and if you talk about perceiving a temporally, it's like in a similar category. Like I can't picture what the fuck you mean by that. But well, it's not you know. about picturing; it's about the logical possibility of doing so, or sorry, epistemic possibility of doing so. But but just just to be clear, just because I'd like to get into actually talking about this, but just to clear up this thing about mind changing. So the thing I didn't like is you seem to take it like I had changed my attitude about whether we can perceive yes. things a temporally. Well, there, well there no, was never... no, 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 no. Again, this is what I was talking about, the methodological change, because I believe that you had this view and maybe you didn't, but this is how I and everyone that I talked to, um, like Destiny also thought this was your belief, as far as I know, that basically all of the all of the beliefs or... Uh, truths that we have are going to be relative to one's given system. So saying that it is necessary that we perceive a temporally, well, the truth or falsity of that is just going to be dependent upon what axiom is in my system. And it's just as possible that someone else has the axiom that you, that isn't a necessary condition. Well, someone and, could someone could say that. I don't know what the fuck they'd be. But does it actually reflect though? their cognition? 
I highly doubt it unless there's some like transcended being or something. And so if you are denying that you ever believed that. Yeah, I never had a belief that people could perceive atemporally. Not, but it, pretty, atemporally pretty is obvious, just a, yeah. is a specific example. But so you acknowledge that there are necessary conditions for human experience that are immutable and they are there, there are ways that i can't picture human experience not being i can't picture us for example Why, i'm not talking about temporal. picture i'm not talking about I, i'm talking about you know a pure um it's not about picturing really i'm not sure exactly well, what you mean by that. well okay so i think prior to saying if something is possible or not i have to kind of like have some idea what it's even talking about, right? And if I can't even get in my head like what the concept is, it's hard for me to say that I think that it's like true or false or possible or impossible or something like this. So, oh, you, so you don't about... mean picture like a mental image though? You mean it more no, broadly, no, more I generally? Just, I mean like understand. Like if Got you say, it, okay. If you yes. There are square circles or I'm perceiving atemporally right now or something. It's like, I mean, I don't know what the fuck you mean. Right. And there's never there's never a point where I thought there were square circles or that people can perceive a temporally. So, you know, I just don't know. I'm not sure what the attitude change is supposed to be. Uh, well, the attitude change was your acknowledgement or for, this was my belief that you believe that, you know, there ultimately were no, in a sense, necessary truths. Right. Do you and think? This, that, well, wait, but the only thing that I granted is that I don't think we can perceive a temporally. And that's something that I always believe. So you don't believe right? there are necessary truths. Yes. Or, a, answer this question. Yes or no, with no preface like you do with me. There are necessary truths. Necessary there means true in all possible worlds. Uh, okay, I'll reframe it so we don't bring the concept of truth. It is necessary that human beings or, uh, experience the world in a certain way. There are, there are necessary conditions of the human experience that are impossible to be otherwise. Yes or no? Does not well, sorry to be annoying. Does impossible there refer to logical possibility? No, epistemic possibility. Um... We'd have to get into a whole thing about epistemic possibility for me to answer that. Do we want to do that? Well, here, I... let's move off at this point so you can go to that if that's what you want to talk about. Just with respect to the belief change, let's just we'll just say where we're at. OK, so we're not aware of some um, some, you know, proposition that I changed my attitude towards. You think there's been some kind of change in methodological Logical, attitude? Because whatever, I, exactly I ex that is right. And I explained and, to now, you the. Now, yeah, I know. I'm not I'm not aware of what that change is. I'm not convinced of that. But I feel like we don't want to get hung up forever on it. So we'll just kind of like we did with the others. We'll just leave it at, you know, you claim there's a methodological change. I'm not sure what it is. Sure. Okay, so yes or no. Okay. Well, you uh, you cut out, a ask your thing. But then after this, what I want to do is I want to go to what actual propositions you think I believe that are false. Okay, so yes or no, there are necessary epistemic conditions for humanity. Yes or no? I have to ask about what that no, means. No, just answer the question. I, I'm incapable because I don't understand it. Ugh. There are well, necessary ways honest? that human beings experience the world, and there's and, no other way that they could. And answer the question. I could... Well, that, but there's things I need to clarify about the question, right? I'm not trying to why get am away I, from... Why am I not allowed to clarify the question with you? Cla clarifying the question is fine. Asking unrelated questions is what But No, me. but the this is my issue with you. It's because you'll do this with me, and no, I will try to preface into, it by being very try, yeah. explicit what only, you're talking you about. Okay, only if you try to go into something that I can't but see I how never it's related. Do. Right? But I never do. But okay, then I'll explain to you how it's related. You're, so you're going one, forward... You're the, one, you're the one going off point right now. Go, right now, go, no, I'm no, trying I'm, to answer, I'm trying to make... So I'm we can to have a more your, fruitful don't discussion. Don't you want me to answer your question? Absolutely. I'm trying to, I just, your, I, I'm trying okay, to do this as a highlighting point. I need to what the words in the question mean. Okay, and I will absolutely... But I just want... So in the future, when you give me those yes or no questions, allow me to say something other than yes or no. And if, if you believe I'm trying to... If, if, if you believe I'm yeah. getting off topic, I will explain to you why I am not. Okay? Yeah, Agreed? but the explanation, ha the explanation has to come in the form of why the question... Uh, that you're asking needs right. to be answered in order for you to understand the question. And clear. that's what I've tried to do, but you just keep yelling at me. Okay, well, if if you're trying to do that, just make that clear to me, right? Because I've I think tried. Yeah, cause if, <laughs> I've tried, cause if Isaac. Because if, if I can't see what you're actually getting at, I'm probably just going to register it as rambling. But if you say, look, okay, I want to answer your question. I can't answer that because I'm not clear about what this word means, right? Of course I'm going to humor that. 
right? So if you ever if you ever want my patience, just make it clear how you're staying on point, right? That that will always diffuse an angry Isaac. Now, well, I try to do it, right? But then you I, scream I, I, at me. I've just, I've just told you how to do it, right? Because well, but I, I did exactly what you described. Uh, I, I don't know if you did exactly that. You're asserting that, like you always you always kind of assert things, but you know I don't know if that's actually. Why do you think I would right? preface things before the yes or no answer? I think that when I look, as long as what do you think a preface is? It's just it's just the thing is it's like I don't even know what you're trying to get out of me right now. Like what, I'm trying like, to I'm trying to make it so that in the future you're not going to do the bullshit with me again. I don't think I'm doing the bullshit with you at all. If I'm trying to get an answer from you and you're not answering, I will become frustrated. Now, if you think that there's something that needs to be addressed in order for you to answer the question. Yes. Just make it just make it clear that that's, that's what, you're what doing. I try now, to if, do though. Now, if now if you claim that is what you were doing before, that's not how it registered to me. It could be that's what you're doing, but that's certainly not how it registered. Okay, well, so Why now we're aware, and now we can both yeah. be more aware of it. Right, okay? right. And if you want it to register for sure, just say okay. it explicitly. Yeah. Okay, okay. So okay. yes or no, although you want me. So do you believe that we as human beings, okay, mm -hmm. there is there are necessary ways that we have to experience the world? So let me give you a Kantian example, okay? Space is something that is not external to us. It's not an external object that we intuit. Uh, instead, it is something that we, in a sense, impose upon the external world. Well, wait, can we, for the sake of clarity... I'm just, that's an example. We don't have to... Yeah, uh, for, but I, for the sake of clarity, let's do the example that we've gotten comfortable with. Right? Well, so atemporally we is more of, difficult. It's a more difficult example I, I, than I find space. that I find that straightforward. Like, I well, mean, okay, but if we stop finding it straightforward, let's just go to the space one because I okay. I personally think it's more easily okay. intuitable. All right, sure. Well, or I mean, I, I don't know what else you want to say. Like perceiving what things like in accord with like the law of identity. That would be another one. I yes, would understand that would be this, another this, one. Yes. Okay. Well, that's that's fine. Also, the space one is a little weird for me, but we, let's not. I think get the space one's so. actually the most. Uh, that's okay. Well, it, look if, if it's if it's fruitful, we look, can. And I'm not. I'm not. So, okay. I this look, this is just my path. No, no. I know. No. But so look. Now that we're like calm here, right? Like this is not me trying to posture, right? Because I'm sure that no, this I don't is think what you're trying to posture. No, right no, 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 no. But no, I'm about it. to say something. I'm about to say something that you might perceive as posturing. But it's really just my passion for philosophy. Okay. I really think you should recon because it's really fucking good. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Generally, no, and everyone no. watching, even ask yourselves, viewers. Okay, I really encourage it. It's really good stuff. Okay. Okay. All right. So okay. that wasn't. Right. I wasn't trying to posture there. Okay. No, I just that's fine. To that's okay. fine. Okay. okay. Now you're asking me if I think that there are necessary conditions for human experience. Okay. One of yeah. those conditions we're going to say is you know perceiving temporally or perceiving in line with the law of identity. Now, when you say necessary, you're telling me you're not referring to as something that's true in all possible worlds. You're so you're talking about some the other issue, notion of necessity. So, but yeah, so the issue with that notion of of I don't care necessity. about the issue. That, that's fine. You don't even need to explain the issue. Just tell me what you mean when you say it. Well, no, but I well no. So the issue is is uh, honestly, I, I I'm not even sure how to to really. I mean, I'm sure we could find another philosopher who could better answer it. But specifically with Kant, because I'm working within that that framework, right? I don't know if we can talk about necessary in all possible worlds, because then we get into the issue of, well, we're talking, like, what is the ontological I status? I didn't say necessary in all possible worlds. I, I was just defining necessity as something that's true, true in, all in all possible, possible worlds. Right, but the issue, you see the issue with bringing in possible worlds into, like, such a foundational question, right? Because then all of a sudden we might be bringing in a, an entire ontological concept that we don't even want to talk about in the first place. Um, there, there may or may not be an issue. I'm not entirely clear. Right, and I'm not either. I'm not, like, I just I'll, want to prefacing that, yeah. yeah. Okay, but that that's fine. I mean, sure. But so what? Do but you le mean? okay, let's do let's let's say that then. Okay, let's say that. But with that qualification, that perhaps that might not be a a charitable way to yeah. ascribe so, necessity okay. to him. But okay. let's operate under that. Yeah. So so with that, no, I'm I'm not convinced that it's true in all possible worlds that humans perceive. Um, uh, temporally, because then I have to to say that I'd have to be able to show that the claim that they can perceive a temporally yields a contradiction, and I'm not aware of how to do that. If there's a way to do that, then I'll grant you the claim for sure. That the specifically the claim that um, it's uh, it's necessary, it's true in all possible worlds that humans perceive temporally. If you show me that the denial of that yields a contradiction, then I would certainly grant that. 
but currently I'm not aware of how. Oh, actually, you know what? Them. I yes, I actually understand why you can't frame it like this. That this this is what I right. Okay, my bad. Sorry, we can okay. invoke po- we cannot invoke possible worlds, and I've just realized why through that answer. It is quite literally because when you bring in possible worlds, you're doing the very thing that Kant doesn't allow for, which is in a sense allowing the human cognition to go beyond the bounds of their own experience in this actual world. Um, So to bring in the notion of possible worlds is to invoke some sort of ontological claim that we really can't know for certain until we've done this epistemic project in the first place. Well, that's that's Um, fine. So if, if if you have a different uh notion of necessity that you want to use then you know just present it if i can understand it then i can you know tell you if i think that uh temporal perception is necessary um well let's not do temporal perception Let, let's do the, the identity I, sure yeah uh, the, the yeah. principle of, so there you go that one from the standpoint of ourselves right now in this moment it is quite literally impossible to go beyond our experience and mm-hmm. and Make, ultimately, this is what I'll say, is that, and actually, this this is a, even for my listener, because I've been trying to work out, because this is obviously a difficult subject, right? Um, so the best way I think to communicate this is that when I'm talking about necessity, right, th- this is why necessity, I don't think, can be defined with regards to possible worlds, because necessity is going to be something always, in a sense, confined, at least for Kant, confined to our own individual standpoint at this very moment in time, okay? So when I, for example, say I necessarily interpret the world temporally, uh, that is basically saying that within my experience, there is no other way under which I could perceive the world. Because to say otherwise is, in a sense, to divorce myself from the human standpoint and make claims about the world that I can ultimately not know because we are a, we are finite beings, right? Um, and I think that's even better with something like the principle of contradiction to say that it is necessary that I, from the human standpoint, must interpret the world uh, utilizing the principle of contradiction. So I can't see something that is both red and not red. Um, is simply to say that uh, it's necessarily the case because I can't ever go beyond it in the first place. Um, so invoking the notion of possible worlds is in a sense violating. Yeah. Well, I, I hear that you don't want to talk about the possible world. It's fine. I'm just, I'm just Well, no, but that, that's like, in a sense what, trying to explain to you what I mean by necessary. Is that yeah, nece- just, necessity de- is always defined. definition would be easiest for me, though, if you just give a definition. What does, like, what does it mean to say something is necessary? It's necessary if and only if. Um. Hmm. That's fine. You can take your time. I mean, we don't even have to necessarily you. Oh, that's funny you're saying necessarily. I don't think we even <laughs> need to necessarily bring in the word necessary into the. That's that's fine. Then just rephrase the initial question discussion. without necessary. Yeah, no, I'm just trying to be streamlined. That's fine. If you if that word's problematic, just rephrase the initial question Here's without one. necessary. To suggest or contemplate the possible or not, I can't. To suggest or contemplate an a, a human's ability to interpret the world a temporarily is meaningless perhaps that is a better um, um, way to go about it and i i take meaningless there to basically mean like like inconceptualizable yeah i think that would be the best way it, we can never have any sort of we, but we can't really say anything about it because it is in a sense beyond anything we so, can ever know so i'm i can say something close to that I can't understand what it would mean to perceive a right. temporally, but I don't know if I can establish that it is meaningless just in virtue of the fact that I can't understand what it would mean. Well, I, well, well, I mean, that's ultimately, well, meaning is going to be defined relative to a uh, linguistic community. Yeah, if, right? you, if, you want, if you want to make that move and you want to just say that it's meaningless, um, you know, if and only if you can't... Um, you can't it. understand the meaning then yes. uh, yeah then that okay and then that would mean that all all we're saying when you're asking me uh is it meaningless to say that we can perceive a temporally you're asking me do, can i understand what is even meant by saying i can perceive a temporally no i i can't understand what that right means. okay then yeah you are under my notion a an epistemic realist um okay believe- but but yep but and now just a tiny point 
So mm-hmm. if you want to say by your notion, right, uh, that I'm an epistemic realist, like I, when people say their notion, I don't care if it's the standard notion. I don't care if it's theirs. I just care about if it's coherent. But you don't think that I've changed a belief there, right? You don't think that there is some point where I thought that people could like, you know, perceive a temporally or like perceive like without the law of identity or something like this, uh, like obviously, right? Well, I tried the the previous perception that I it just it just seems like what you're you, sorry you can say that, but it just seems like what you're doing is you clarify what I actually think there, and then right. you categorize yes, perhaps, me appropriately. Yes. Because, okay. of, right, but, but I think I've this done, is ultimately yeah. an issue with philosophical terminology, and this is something I've realized because I I wrote this post and that video like I don't know over a year ago now, right? So um, I've realized that the people I'm discussing with, and again, this is not me trying to posture, but I'm operating under notions of terminology that are used within the philosophical community, right? So when you use like the yeah. term axiom, like you used to, I ascribe to you yeah. a certain I, view. I, I used to. I do still use the term like I would just refer to something as kind of axiomatic if I like, you know, accept it and don't really have like a justification for it. But you don't Um, believe that the human experience is axiomatic. I don't even know what that means in that that like this statement. It's not an assumption that I have. It's I I don't statement like for the the statement that I can't perceive a temporally. That's not a mere assumption. There's also one thing I want to say about the terminology. I, I will answer that. But um, if it did, like the easiest way to have the discussion is with the terminology. So when you want to introduce terminology, just type it or something in realm of AY and we can refer back to it. We can add whatever terminology is necessary. I'm sure I can understand the meaning of words. What was it that you asked there? Um, that you don't believe that the statement that um, the world uh, or the human cannot perceive or I as a human cannot perceive um, a temporally is merely an assumption. Um, an assumption. Um, well, it's something wait, more I than mean, just an assumption. It's well. Are you trying to ask me? Like, because the thing is, there's some truth value to that, right? Like, it seems like there's a fact of the matter. But well, you know, I mean, truth I doesn't necessarily have to be fact in the matter. But well, okay, I guess it depends what you mean by truth. Right. So I mean, I'd I say under any properly, truth. Okay. So I just want to make sure I'm understanding what you're asking. Can you just repeat the question again? Do you believe that the statement that I as a human can perceive only uh, a temporally or only temporally rather is a mere assumption? It's nothing more than an assumption. A mere assumption. So something that we're taking to be the case without justification. Yes, exactly. Um, I mean, possibly like what's the justification for? Well, the justification is the fact that the other that otherwise it's a meaningless the, the opposite of that is meaningless right we're always so confined within you, the human so, experience so just to be clear you consider a proposition or a belief sorry you consider a belief justified if you can't conceptualize because that's what meaning meant right you can't conceptualize the contrary right well it, so, it's it's not necessarily I mean, obviously, at this level, we are using all these epistemic. This is what makes this kind of investigation so difficult is that it's hard to lay down these types of definitions because like when we're trying to figure out what truth means, right, it's always working within this sort of very fuzzy, um, very um, vague notion because we can't seem to employ a lot of the notions that we wanted to before because they are usually defined in terms of truth right so that's why this discussion is a bit vague but that's a necessary fact of the matter um yeah i I understand that you think that this kind of discussion is somehow like prior to a lot of concepts and using those concepts begs the question for certain like i don't know like frameworks of fucking i don't know like metaphysics or some shit but let's let's just be clear about okay so let's just be clear about what what it is you're asking me so you asked if um what was it about perceiving a temporally do i think that that just ask it how you asked it again right like maybe believe that that statement is just a mere assumption and by assumption we okay and uh, oh yeah it's just as here's here's one it's it's just just as valid one one second just let me write it out so the statement is, um, I can perceive atemporally. Uh, I can't. Uh, as a human, I cannot perceive atemporally. Okay, as a human, I can't perceive atemporally. Okay, so now you're asking me... Oh, that didn't spell it right. You're asking me what about that? Do you believe that that is a mere assumption? 
you're asking, okay, is that an assumption? A mere and, assumption. Uh, um, um, is, does, is mere meaningful there? Yeah, absolutely. Because that saying that it's a mere means that it's nothing else besides an assumption. Okay. Um, I mean, well, it's hard for anything to be just an assumption. Surely there's, it's also like, it's like language and it's other, like that seems like a weird way to, whatever. Okay. So, but you're basically asking, is it an assumption? And so we're going to say it's an assumption if it lacks justification. Is that like what you're kind of working with? Or do you have some other notion of assumption? Sure, we can go with that for now. Well, I'm trying to answer how you want it. Is that how you're thinking about it? If you're talking, you're uh, silent. No, I, I'm just thinking about... Oh, yeah, take your time. No worries. That it's... If it's just an assumption, well, I'm not, you I'm recognize not, despite, that it's validity. Despite, despite, your, despite your, like, you know, protestations to the contrary, like, I'm not looking for a gotcha. If if we get I th to it Well, look, I think you were you, earlier. Wait a second. Wait, or, oh, earlier I absolutely was with the contradiction thing, but I'm not right now. If we get to a point with something like this where... Uh, you just realize that word's like biting in the ass and there's some some fucking problem with it, but you think that you can like adjust what you said to make it work. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh, you had to change the word. Like, yeah, just change it later if you need to. But yeah, so we're going to say it's an assumption if and only if it's, a, you know, a belief lacking justification. Oh, did you, sorry, did you just admit that all you were trying to do was a gotcha with the contradiction thing? By a gotcha, uh, if you mean pointing out like like trying to really clearly say you made an error here that's what i was trying to do there so there was no charitability involved there um i think i was charitable when i said when i How... summarized everything by by saying what do you mean by so, a gotcha um i mean your entire I intent some, in that conversation point, some, was literally just it. to prove me wrong yeah i wanted to show that what you said about so that was anything wrong. that i said to you would not have changed your mind uh that's wait, wait why does that follow well because so, if, so if wait, you are wait, wait, if wait, you're pursuing gotchas there. there's usually the connotation that you were not being charitable no I, I wouldn't say that wait but now wait you just changed the language to charitable before you said there's nothing that i could say that would change your mind or something like that so right I, because I, no, yes like, because you are in that state of being so uncharitable that you're just you're purely targeting well, trying to get you to now, admit a now, contradiction see see the thing is like you're now we're getting into the psychology of me so like the quick the quick answer is what i was doing is i think you said something wrong and i just wanted to point it out right and when you tried to make moves to get away from it i allowed them right when you said well but you, you know, did it actually, you screamed at me well let's just think of all the things that i granted right so when we talked about did you actually use the word apparently in your original tweet i said i don't remember maybe you did and maybe you're right there's one thing that i granted um Another was uh, when I summarized the issue, I said that um, we both agree it's a contradiction under a literal interpretation, and we disagree about whether the literal interpretation is reasonable, right? I think I'm being pretty fair to you. No, you weren't being fair. And I explained okay, well, this to you. Look, if, if we're, look, we're just arguing about notions of fairness and what my motivations were. I will just say, as far as I'm aware, what I was doing was trying to prove you wrong. If you showed a logical problem with what I'm saying, I absolutely would have listened to it. But yeah, I want that at that point, I had a specific point I was trying to make. And at this point in the conversation, I'm just trying to understand and answer your question. So it's a different type of thing. Surely you understand that you can right, be and in I would just rather in never, never be engaged in that stupid gotcha thing. Because wait, then no, it just no, no, wait, no, 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 wait, sorry, sorry. The, it's not it's not a gotcha to be just playing offense, right? Like, Right now, you're asking questions, but if I say something that you can actually deliver an argument against, presumably you'll play offense and be like, okay, well, I think what you just said there is actually false, and then you'll give me arguments against it. Yes, but, so, but there's a way to have a discussion where you don't need to do that at all in the first place, where we can be more charitable to each other. Like, like look, like me, admit, me sure. admitting to you that, well, you know, perhaps actually I misunderstood your original intention, right? I'm not pulling up yeah, or, specific or me, quotes. Or me granting to you, possibly I misread the quote. Right. I, look, if you if you think I'm being uncharitable, then that's fine. I don't. I think that it's just a different phase in the conversation. I think At earlier point, you were, was... and so I'm just saying that that okay, type well, of well, that, you, okay, that kind you're, of you're, yeah, okay, that kind well, of conversation your view that we were clear, having. My view on that's clear. Do we really want to spend time on that? You think I'm being uncharitable? I don't think I was. Well, okay? I'm just saying but in the future, really let us friends. not let's not do that. Well. well no, I mean, if there is some thing that you say and I go, well, wait, that's a fucking contradiction. It's like, of course, I'm going to point that out and want to hammer the point. Right. 
That doesn't mean being uncharitable as far as I'm aware. Well, you were I because no I was trying with... to explain to you why it isn't strictly a contradiction because if you look well, at the context of were, the sentence, the meaning is going of, to be given in the context. Kind of, Okay, I think you're kind of trying to, you know. Do I know some you believe that exactly. You are assuming the worst of me. Yeah, well, I mean, I that's do, why I do you were make... being uncharitable because you were assuming I that I was trying I to backtrack on that. that. I don't grant. I don't grant that I was being uncharitable. But Ram, look, I understand you think I was. I don't think I was, and I think neither of us want to fucking waste our time on it. Let's just talk. Well, about no, the... I'm, I'm trying to highlight this because in the future, just try not to do that because I am not here. I, yeah, I don't grant that it's unshared. I don't see an issue with it, though. So in order for me to get around to your position of don't do it, we'd have to establish that it's an issue. And it just seems like who the fuck? Like, do we really want to spend time sitting here talking? Like, it just seems like a waste of time. Well, recognize, I, I never do that it. with you. Right. I never hold your feet uh, oh, to I, the fire. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, I mean, if you don't, uh, first of all, I don't know if it's true that you ever do that. I'd have to watch what you say. But um, yeah, I mean, like, I will absolutely hold someone's feet to the fire if I think they're saying something contradictory, for sure. But there's a way to express that someone is contradicting themselves. Listen to them. But we'll <sighs> explain to you why yeah. you don't think it was a contradiction. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I don't, again, Rem, I don't think I was being uncharitable, but I'm trying to move the conversation along. Okay. Because where, where we get hung up is we get hung up on these things that I hate talking about. Like, I don't care if you think I'm nice. I don't care if you think I'm charitable. I don't care if you like me. I don't care about any of that. All I care about is, do I actually have any false beliefs? Like that's the, so that's part of why I have so little patience. Well, on that's all my biggest issue with you. Okay, well, my look, biggest issue are, are your methodological about, can, can way about talk, doing this. Okay, well, well, fine, good for you. But like, let's talk about the question, right? You were asking about a temporal perception. Can we talk oh. about the actual issues? I mean, sure, but I, I feel like while we're on this topic, I mean, because we can go into this, and I mean, I don't ultimately really mind because the reason I tweeted out all this in the first place is that I believe that you're talking, and this is my biggest issue with you. You're talking about subjects that you just don't have knowledge on. Right. And you call yourself, you know, a threshold. Wait, wait. wait. But am I saying, see, now that I think is the posturing, right? Is there something I'm saying that's false? Well, okay. So no, but again, this is the, this is, this is where we have a disagreement on, but on whether then, this is legitimate wait, or but not. You, but you understand that you just didn't answer me, right? Just give an answer and then, then say what you want to say. Do you think I'm actually saying something false? Um, I, well, ultimately, I, I do, at the end of the day, believe that you're okay. saying something false. But that okay. is not the issue. That is not the primary okay. issue that I have with you. Uh, I have okay. a primary well, well, issue with the way in which yeah, you but, conduct your conversations. Oh, Are you yeah, unable yeah, okay. to defend oh, that? Oh, so, so, so let, let me just be clear. I just don't care. Like, I don't care at all about something like if it's like tone policing or your interpretation of how I operate. And, like, I, I cannot even, it's like I can't even begin to convey how little I care. Like, there's probably like nothing you could ever say that would make me care. Okay, like, can I, I ask I, you one I, question I, then? Okay. I think, I think it's about as unlikely as me perceiving atemporally. Okay. Can, do you believe that, for example, anti vaxxers should be seen with similar authority to scientists? Rem. I want I, answer the I, question. It's just yeah. a simple question. Do I, no, I don't. But I think that we're getting okay. Off but point. no, but this, but the, no, but this was my Look, primary point when I oh tweeted. So should God. we not talk about the point? Uh, no, we shouldn't. Because what I care about is if I. Why can we talk about what you care about, but not what I care about? Because that's you took what issue I with the that, things that I because, said in my tweet, and I want to talk about those. Oh, if you if you look, all all I'm interested in because you can't defend you, it. Is that what it is? The, no, what I, it's about what I'm actually interested in talking about. I don't care about someone talking about my attitude. Then why are you? Why do you take issue about, with my tweets? I care. I care about. Well, okay. So I do. I do find some of the shade you cast unreasonable. But just oh, then, let's talk about that. I want. Wait, let's talk about no, that. Okay, Rem. I'm telling you that what I want to focus on is: Do I believe something false? But okay? that is not yes. at all what my tweets were about. Okay. But that's what I want to talk about right now. I feel well, like because the thing is, I because can you can't defend because no, you can't defend the way that you conduct this. On, it's because I want to stay on the fucking. Point. I didn't sign up for this conversation. I signed up. I talked about this oh, at okay. the start well, of my well, stream. Well, I laid wait, out wait, wait, what wait. I wanted to talk right, about. Right. Ask now, yourself. Now, well, look, you're trying to have some conversation about you know, uh, oh, is ask yourself nice or is ask yourself no, chair. not about like, nice. I don't. No. I don't. Okay, well, what's the claim? But my claim, I I can. Do you want me to even just read the very specific? Uh, no, I don't, I don't care about arguing. Look, I don't. It Rem, it's just so annoying. I don't care. Then don't take about, issue like, with my tweets if you can't defend it. No, no, no. What I take issue with, uh, okay. I, I hate that you're dragging me into this. I'm trying to. Then not don't come. To, get, then don't say you want to no, talk Rem, about it. Shut up. Shut up. You said you wanted to talk about the, these tweets. Oh my 
God, shut up. Fuck, dude. Now, just listen, okay? What bothered me about, and I'm so annoyed that you're forcing me into talking about this, because I don't, this is not what I care about, okay? Well, then get off the stream, then hang up. What bothered me about the, uh, if we're going to be forced to stay on this instead of talking about if I have false beliefs, I will, but I'm just going to say something because you're trying to force the issue. And now I have to respond or else it seems like, you know, oh, I can't defend myself because Rem kept asking if I could defend myself and I tried to actually stay on point, right? So all I would say is that the thing that annoyed me about the tweets is you were talking like my position doesn't make sense. And you didn't want to actually just come and speak to me about whether my position doesn't make sense. My concern has always been about whether my position makes sense, okay? I don't care if you think I'm an asshole. I am an asshole. I fucking hate sophists. I hate people who weasel around, which I don't even necessarily like put you in that category, although you can be really fucking annoying. I don't think you're that bad. But what annoyed me about the tweets was just that you were saying that you were suggesting that I have a wrong position and you didn't want to come and in my, it, okay? When in my tweets did I say that? <sighs> Let's go over to the tweets and look at them. Okay? Yeah, because my tweets are taking specific issue with the way that you conduct yourself. I, I I'm, I'm that... so, I have to say, I'm so Then hang up the fucking you're... call. Then hang up the call. Well, well, well no, because what I, my interest here is showing that you either can't show that I actually have But a that's not the belief. claim that I'm making on Twitter. Oh, well, if you're not claiming I have any, wait, but are you, I don't care about just on Twitter. I care about, are you claiming that I have false beliefs? I mean, like ultimately at the end, but that's not what I'm here to discuss. Yeah. And it's never okay. been what I've said that I want to discuss. Uh, okay, well, maybe we have a mismatch. Look, I'm going to go to humor you. So you are unable okay. to defend the way that you conduct right. yourself. Oh my, is, oh my God. Yes or no? The, are you, are you not? tracking the conversation we're talking about the tweets you right? want to talk to about that i don't want to talk you, about that you're, you're not the one that just oh controls God. this this is a oh give and take God. i've talked about what you want to talk about you, let's you talk said, about what i want to talk about you tried to you tried to t look i didn't take it over to the fucking tweets you asked me oh then why are you annoyed by the tweets or something like that right and you tried to paint it as if the reason i'm annoyed by the tweets is that you're like you know, saying things about my attitude or my care. I don't what is care the first at thing? about that. Okay, okay. What I is care, the first? I yes, I understand. I understand I mean, what you're saying. Find the tweets. Okay, I Just understand. Yes, sec. yes. At the start okay. of this conversation, you came in go. and you asked me three questions. Why can I not do a very similar thing okay, to you? One second. Ask yourself threshold deontology. Is Are you going to answer my question? I'm trying to answer the first fucking shit that's on the table, Rem. Okay. Ask yourself's threshold deontology is an ad hoc system that yep. tries to make him feel better and that he can't really justify any of his moral positions. Uh, it's a position considered explicitly and rejected by one single philosopher in the literature. So what I get, what if you want to know what frustrated me about that and what mm -hmm. made me reply is that when you say words like ad hoc and yes. make him feel better and can't yes. justify I'm just not clear that those things are true. I'm not sure that I agree with those things. Right. And well, let's have a discussion about whether you right, are, but, have chosen but, these ad hoc. You, un you understand that what frustrated me about the tweet was not Rem say mean thing, right? It's it's that there's claims that are being made there about my position. That's what I care about. No, no. Really what my claim here is that you can't justify shit because you have no knowledge in the oh. field. Okay, wait, but what I'm talking, I'm not talking about what you ultimately mean. I'm talking, I thought we're interested in whether the thing that frustrated me about that tweet was you can, can I read out my follow tweet or, that I, can I re read my reply to this? I can say, we just, I'm just clarify no, no. the point? But no, but can you're reading clarify? a point that I'm not making. I make very explicit I'm what not, my I'm issue not, is oh here. Oh my God, I'm not, the point I'm making is about how I interpreted it and what frustrated me about it. Okay, and I'm telling, fine, and I'm but that's you, all what I'm here to talk I'm to you about. So if you, you want to talk you about know, that, end the call. The, no, you brought the conversation here, Rem, by saying- No, you're the one that replied saying, let's debate it. Oh my, no, I tried to get away from this topic so we could talk about the actual position. If you have issues with my position, I'm right here. Oh my ask God, you to... oh my God. It's, in, it's Sometimes you're crazy, dude. Like, I just, I don't look, understand. Why won't you look, discuss you, about your look, look, ability I, to justify uh, things? Rem, fuck, dude. That, I want to discuss about that. That's, that's the okay. actual, that's the actual position. But what I want to address is the slime that you kept throwing on the table and that I now have to wipe off, right? That's, slime? It's like, <clears throat> okay, well, what you said was that I, you told me something like, you know, I'm, I'm like annoyed with you talking about my character or my charitability or like one of these things about your tweets. Like, why would you be annoyed with the tweets then if it's just about your position, right? So I'm just telling you what frustrated me about the tweets, okay? What frustrated me is not Rem saying mean things. 
What frustrates me about the tweets is you saying that my position is wrong. But it's not. I'm so not, sorry. I, I want to say I, I, I understand it's not the mean things, but I'm making a claim about what you ought to do. Look, I, as do you are you understand? unable to? But Look, are you unable you, to have that discussion? Understand? Yes or no? Do you no? Just listen. Do you understand that what frustrated me about yes. the tweets? Yes. Was, yes. Right. I do. Whether it's an accurate perception sure. or not, the thing that frustrated me about the tweets was that it seems like you're saying I'm wrong and you don't want to come discuss it. That's what frustrated me. Sure. Right? Do we I, understand that? I understand that that is what you that what you've now, taken away from the tweets and what now, frustrates you. Can I say what frustrates what, me what, about what, your general conduct? Yeah. Or am I unable okay. to air my well, own yeah, frustrations yeah, no, to you? Yeah, yeah, you you can you can air your frustration, but before okay. you do, this is what this is what I'm gonna say. Okay, I am not interested in having a conversation about if I'm a nice person, about if I'm don't charitable. I I okay, because I simply don't. I don't give care. a fuck the, about. Like, I'm not okay, talking about yeah, a nice person. I just I just I can't emphasize this enough. Okay, the only thing I care about in this conversation is do I believe something false? That is the only thing I actually care i do believe you actually yes you do believe something um that is false okay but you said you wanted to make some well, point can... about my attitude so well, make no no i i will let's go back to the actual conversation which this is, is the what belief i wanted that to do you the hold. entire time i'll say very explicitly what the belief that you hold that is actually okay, false and, be and before you do you realize we're moving away from this whole thing we were trying to do in text right like there's uh, it's i get so cluttered rem because it's like you jump all over the place and I try to go systematically. Well, okay, no, you just, you're just you very domineering on the conversation. Please, so I please, feel like I can never gear please, it towards something. Stop! This is stop, exactly, stop. exactly what I'm it's talking like, about. It, no, it's Rem. It's because you don't think like linearly enough. It frustrates me. <laughs> I just want to exactly stay. I just, I just want to stay. I want to stay on one fucking path. I don't and I'm telling go. you, I'm not interested in this discussion. Okay. Okay, just just listen. Okay, there's two, I want to be clear about the fucking conversation. Okay, one conversation we had on the table was you were trying to ask me about if I believe uh, if there are necessary conditions for human experience. Okay, and we we're doing that in text. That's this whole I can perceive a temporally. Is that an assumption? Does assumption? Uh, yeah, I'm not interested in that anymore. Okay, okay, we're dropping that. That's fine. Okay, now the other thing you said a second ago was that you wanted to make some statement about my character before we move on or something like that. Okay, so yeah. do you want to make that statement and then we can go and talk about the actual topic? Well, whatever they're the it same is? things. They're the same thing. No, no, no. The topic is I have some prop. No, is your statement that I believe something false? Yes, but but okay. it's also related to your character. Okay, what is the false belief that? The false belief that you hold is that you believe that you are morally okay, or you are you are morally neutral, and it's not a bad thing for you to go on your platform of thousands of people and talk about a subject that you know absolutely dog shit about. That is the belief um, that you hold that I believe is false. W w wait, but that I'm morally okay. So yeah, I feel comfortable going on my platform and talking yes. about what a, topic? A, to a topic that you, like for example, well, meta that, that sounds That sounds kind of like uh, loaded, but yeah, topic I know. No, yeah, I'm happy going on and talking about meta ethics. Sure. I have some views about meta. And do you, have you read anything in meta ethics? I, ha I don't have any detailed knowledge. No. What about in just general normative ethics? Have you read any normative ethical texts? Yeah, I mean, I, I have, I've, I've read some basic things, Rem, but I don't like have what? deep knowledge. I don't have deep knowledge of the topics. But what I'm not interested in, which you're trying to do right now, right? I hate this about you. I can't even describe uh -huh. how much I hate it, okay? We're sitting here, and we're supposed to be having a conversation about what do I believe that's false? Well, this right? is a belief that now, you have that I believe wait, is false. No, no, no. Shut up, Rem, okay? Now, what you're what you're trying to do is you're trying to get into posturing about I've read more than Isaac. I grant you that you've read more than me. Not about okay? me. What Not I, about me. Wait, wait. What I what I want to know is if I believe something false. Now, the belief that you're saying I have is that it's morally okay, which mm -hmm. all I take that to mean is that I'm comfortable with or I have mm -hmm. a preference for or whatever, going on my platform and talking about something that I know nothing about. Yes. Now, now, unless you're going to show me a false belief that I have in metaethics, then no, I don't grant that. Okay. Right. Unless I'm saying something fucking false and harmful, then no. Yeah. So you you ultimately have this belief that you are able 
to, in a sense, do this, and it's a morally okay thing to do. Yeah, I disagree I, so with that. Wait, no, so no, no. Let's no, discuss I'm, it. We, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. When you, you, okay, so we're talking, uh, the belief that I have is that it's, you know, it's okay to be on my platform talking about meta ethics. Now you're claiming that it's not because I have no knowledge. Now, I mm -hmm. don't think someone is now we let's just grant that I have no knowledge about the topic. Okay. I don't think that that makes it wrong for me to speak about something. Well, let's I discuss that. that. That's exactly stop, what I'd love to discuss stop, with you. Stop. Okay. Now let's just grant that. Okay. I don't think it's wrong unless I'm saying something fucking false and harmful. Okay. So what is it that I'm saying that's false? Because why well, disagree need with to that? Stop. I'm, stop. I'm explaining to you. Hello. Hello. Talking. Okay. Because you need to actually explain what I'm saying about meta ethics that's false for me to then have the belief that I'm saying bullshit on my channel and then possibly have the further belief that I'm doing something wrong by talking about meta ethics. So the first thing you need to establish is what I believe about meta ethics that's false. No, that that's wrong. You. I'm telling you, I disagree with that statement. I don't believe that in order, like I disagree that, like you could be saying all the right things, right? This is what I mean by morally lucky, right? You could be saying all the right things, but be completely unjustified in saying so. And as such, I don't believe that you should be saying it, even if it is ultimately the correct thing. Okay, so if if you're, let's just be clear, okay, so the question you asked, you said the false belief I have is that it's morally acceptable for me to be on my channel talking about meta ethics, and the reason is because on your view, I know nothing about meta ethics. Uh -huh. Now, I don't accept that it's, it's in a, well, f basically, I'm, firstly, I'm thinking it's, okay, well, I, I'll try to be clear. So I don't, I don't have that view. I also am not, I, I think that what would be inappropriate, right? Let's just grant that I know nothing. I don't think something is, someone is wrong for talking about a topic if they know nothing about it. I think that as long as they're being rigorous and honest and they, you know, are retracting. But any, they're like, not being rigorous. Oh, well, I'm trying my best to be rigorous in how I think. I'm trying But if you're to being be, rigorous, you'd actually study wait, the subject. Wait. Wait, but this whole thing is just you posturing. Look, it's Rem, not. Let me, the, the, well, let what do you me, mean by rigorous? Let me, let me make it simple, Rem. Let uh -huh. me make it simple, okay? What false belief about meta ethics do I have? No, again, I disagree that in order for that original no, belief no, that we're talking uh, about oh, to be okay. wrong, can yeah, I finish? But, but, can I finish my sentence? No, Look, no, you keep wait, yelling at me about one, finishing your second, sentence, so let me one, finish my sentence. Ah, you're so annoying, dude. I can't Fuck. finish my sentence let, with you. Isaac. Try, let's try. Let's try to oh be systematic, Rem. Okay. You said, right, you the false belief is that uh, I'm comfortable being on my channel talking about meta ethics, okay? Now, I'm saying the condition where I would be uncomfortable is if you showed me that I'm saying bullshit about the topic, okay? So if you're going to say that there's some other prerequisite for me being uncomfortable, I'm not even aware of that. I don't think I agree with that, okay? If you want me to agree that it's unreasonable, you need to show me false things that I'm saying, Rem. Right, So, but that's exactly what I'm trying to say to you is that I believe that just because you are saying the correct things doesn't necessarily mean that you are okay to go on to a huge platform and say them because ultimately you're not, oh, can I finish? Yes, yeah, right. Okay, the, because you are ultimately not justified in, justified in saying them. You are in a sense lucky about doing it. And if we ascribe this type of behavior to all people as we should in ethics, if we have to make it a universal, universalizable law or a universalizable rule, okay, this will be uh, unethical under any popular or consistent moral theory. Okay, so what I, um, okay, so here's what I'm saying to what you're saying. You say that my false belief is that it's uh, it's fine for me to be on my channel talking about meta ethics because I know nothing about meta ethics apparently, mm -hmm. right? Now I'm saying that, uh, okay, so I do hold the belief that it's fine for me to be on that channel. Mm -hmm. um uh i don't uh now I, I don't understand why that belief would be false that it's it's not okay like i mean well that i just explained that to you yeah. well well wait wait a second we have we have to be clear about this so i'm just trying to understand where the disagreement is so let's just take a second here so i do hold that belief that it's fine for me to be on my channel talking about meta ethics now you're claiming that that is a false belief yes Okay, and why is that belief false? Because ultimately, if everyone were to engage, like this is a normative statement, right? You believe that you ought to be able to do this, okay? I'm saying that ultimately, no, you can't do this. Well, wait, so the belief in question is just that, you know, like I'm comfortable do, doing no, this, right? No, and I I'm, am. 
No, I'm talking about an ought, a moral ought, of course. I'm not saying yeah. about whether you're comfortable or not. That's a Wait, ridiculous let's, thing. Let's write, let's write out the sentence. What's the sentence? What's, oh. what's just uh, the false belief? We're going to be systematic because if you can really defend. I never have any issues some... with anyone but you with this. It's a very, very simple right. thing that oh, I'm yeah, saying that, to you. I, I, know, I know it's because I like to be way, way clearer than most people. Okay. So let's get the exact proposition that you think I believe that's false so that we have it on the table and it's clear. Okay. I what is the proposition? I ought to be able to discuss meta ethics despite not knowing anything about meta ethics on a big platform where many people will be influenced by what I say. Oh, sorry, I was I was not talking. Okay, um, I think big platform is not actually like accurate. It's not that big, but um, it's big in the okay. sense that I mean. Okay, I ought to be able to discuss meta ethics despite knowing nothing about meta ethics on a big platform that that people see. That's redundant. We don't fucking need that. It's just on a, on a big platform. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, d despite knowing nothing about meta ethics, yeah, I would. I mean, I don't grant that I know nothing about meta ethics. First of all, but if we um, if we assume, what do you know like, about yeah, meta ethics? I mean, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna just encyclopedically list off my knowledge of meta ethics, Ram. If you um, think if I you believe, wanna, if, if you, you if you think that, we if can you think if you think I if you think I believe something false about meta ethics, you can point that out. Now, let's I don't think, think you can. Let's you can think believe about, something false let's when you think don't. About, have... Let's think about this proposition. Okay, so I ought to be able to discuss meta ethics despite knowing nothing about uh, meta ethics on a big platform. Now, I'm just saying I don't grant that it's a big platform, and I don't grant that I know nothing about meta ethics. I don't. I don't actually agree with those things. Well, I, so I'm going to grant them for the sake of argument. Okay, so let's grant that I know nothing, and let's grant that it's a big platform. Uh, yeah, I still think it's fine to talk about meta ethics if I'm just operating honestly and trying my best to reason on the topic. Yeah. So what's fa what's false about that, that I ought to be able to do that? It's false because it's a wrong thing to do. Okay, so all I take ought to mean is that it's in line with my preferences. Oh my god. If you want to get around it, you can show me why I'm wrong, right? This is going to turn into the meta-ethical Should debate, I be able to I kill think... anyone I want, yes or no? Does sh What does should mean there? Are you just begging the question for realism? Because this is the topic that I'll wreck you on, basically. So let's let's get into this. Well, so no, I just you, I don't even feel you're not you, capable just, of having want, that discussion uh, no, with no, me. No, 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 no. Let's let's have this discussion. So because this I I've been wanting to talk. Well, to no, you no, no. Let's not get off topic here. Um, let's let's go to the original no, discussion this, then. This, well, wait, no, no. The, the, one second. This is the big thing that you try to. Well, talk no, no, no. I want you want no, to stay no, on this, topic. This, we can come back to this. We can come back to the moral realism, anti-realism debate if you want. But let's let's stay. Look, I thought we were being linear. Let me explain why this is the topic, okay? So the reason this is the topic is because this is the false belief that you claim that I have. Now, when you say it's false, you're saying because there's some other ought. Now, all I take ought to mean is something about my preferences, right? So I'm not convinced it's false. So if you want to establish that this is a false belief that I have, you can do that, or you can grant that it's not, and then we can talk about something else. Okay, so basically any so uh, look, look, look. I, I just I want to make this 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 very very clear. Do um, you want an answer to your question though? You asked do you you asked if I think No, 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 no. I, I just want to see if it's if it's worth really discussing this at the end of the at the end of the day because Oh, it is worth. This is like the thing that that you know it's not. No, it's not. because okay. I, so I I mean I understand from your own perspective you might same. not be convinced of this. You, right? You don't think moral realism is like the central thing we disagree about? No, I I, I never said that. I never said that. But I just want to determine okay. if I even want to have bother having to because like for example, let us say let me give you a hypothetical. So maybe you can understand this from my point of view. Okay. Okay. Let us say, for example, that I uh I'm an anti-vaxer and I go up to a scientist. No, I'm not. I'm not. Oh, hold on. No, hold on. I'm not, I'm, that's oh, posturing. Answer. That is just that is just posturing. Ram, I'm giving you an analogy you said, so that you can understand yeah, my point of view. Are you going to let yeah, me do that I, I, or no? Yeah, I understand. Look, do you want me to deliver your analogy for you? Would you really want to talk to an anti-vaxxer? They're so far from comprehending the topic. They're so fucking lost in so many ways that mm -hmm. to even give them the terminology required to have a conversation about the topic would be such an ordeal that who the fuck who actually knows about vaccination would ever want to spend their time? Like, no, that's that not. Point? No, it's not. actually. Really? OK, OK. No, it isn't. Go ahead. I thought I for sure that's what you were going to well, do. Well, it wasn't ahead. mine, but OK. OK, OK, go um, ahead. I will gladly go ahead. So ultimately, if you look at it from my perspective, as someone who is, for example, a moral realist, why would I bother discussing the topic of moral realism with someone 
who is not at all familiar with the literature, has read absolutely nothing on the topic, when I could instead spend time, you know, for, you know, doing like a philosophy lecture or talking to people who are familiar with the subject. So for my own moral system, why would I talk to you about this? Why would you? Well, I, I, look, if you're saying like, why should you? Again, I just take shoulds to cash out in preferences and you might not. Have no, I understand. That, no, no, work so. within my system. Why would I talk to you? Why would you talk to me? Um, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm not sure what you're like. I, I don't even know what you really think. Uh, like, would like is that supposed to be a should? Like, would sounds like a descriptive kind. It's of thing. a moral obligation clear. that. Yeah. Oh, so so you're asking within your system, yes. is there some should about talking to me? Yes. I have no fucking idea because I don't understand your system. Uh, under even utilitarianism, for example. Um, yeah, does it raise utility? Yeah, I mean, I think that it probably does. Like, if you're right about this, you're going to get it out to all of my audience. A bunch of people are going to see that I'm wrong. You know, you'll get more subs, which will let you spread. Well, no, 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 because me even trying to have this conversation with you is nearly impossible. Do you, do you think that, what, one second, but are do you take the view that it's like, if, if someone like, I don't know, like fucking Destiny goes on one of those crazy fucking alt-right things and just goes and wrecks those people? Do you take the view that that's it's actually politics. like a, It's different. Okay. But, it would be like me trying to explain like just, a really complicated just, mathematical just, theorem to someone okay. who understands but, like but, basic but just, algebra. But just as a starting point, surely you grant that that's a positive thing, right? Yeah, sure. But that's politics. I'm not talking yeah, about I, politics. I, I understand. I understand you think there's not a parallel, right? I'm not trying to like, I, I don't do shady tactics, like assume there has to be a parallel just because, mm -hmm. just us, right? It's like, I heard you say that you that's politics so obviously in my mind i'm going he thinks there's not a parallel here okay that's fine now from my point of view it seems like the same kind of reasons apply it seems like if we're talking about is there a utilitarian reason to do it i think there probably is um but i don't i don't really care about that if uh if you think there's not then okay you can just do it to humor me if you want because you know this is what's of interest to me so if you want to do it out of courtesy and grant that they're like i don't, I don't really care about convincing you whether there's a moral reason to do it on your system. I think probably a utilitarian case could be made, but I'm not interested in arguing that. I've given a basic outline of what I think that case might look like. So how about we just have the conversation? Just well, no, kind of because I, I, I have done the thought. I've thought a lot about it, and I don't think it's worth having this type of discussion with you. Okay, so just to be clear, the proposition that I believe that's false, you won't do the conversation that's necessary to explain to me why it's false. Right, because that's, you don't have the groundwork. No, that's okay. If you, if you want to say that, that's fine. Right, because you so, do not have the groundwork so in which to have right, that discussion. But I don't have I don't have any reason to believe that I have a false belief there. If you're not going to argue with me about it, well, pff, I mean that that's all fine and good, right? But you would if you were to actually read the literature. Well, you know, look, you, Rem, it it looks. Can I be honest about how it looks to me? I'm I aware of how it looks. I think, I but think I have no that, issue with that. Yeah, that's that's okay. Right. Well, <laughs> I mean, you're better than me because I. But you reckon I've had you this discussion just, with. Stop with come on come on what do you mean on. what do you mean i'm trying to explain to you i've had this discussion with you before so there's nothing yeah. nothing's gonna change well well no rem the last time we had this discussion and <laughs> in case you don't remember i think that we had a productive discussion i came to understand a lot of you know how you're using language right i understand what kind of things you mean when you talk about epistemic norms you're talking about things that are you know necessary conditions for human experience, right? You clarified some of your terminology. I was able to tell you what parts I agree and disagree with. I think it was productive, right? I think that was good. So I don't see why we can't do the exact same thing here. Let's continue. Okay. Okay. So you're claiming that this belief is false, right? I ought be able to discuss meta ethics. So I'm, I'm granting you, I'm just going to grant for the sake of argument that I know nothing about meta ethics and that my platform is big. I don't really accept either of those, but just for the sake of argument, I'll grant them. Uh, I still don't, uh, I still, you know, I have that belief. I ought be able to do it. Um, and obviously just, you know, this look, isn't, look, I shouldn't let, really have to say it. One second, one second, one second. I shouldn't, I shouldn't need to say this. The reason is because I think that I'm being careful about the topic and I, I think that I'm trying my best to be honest and I'm willing to interact with the other side and yada, yada, yada. So I have my reasons for thinking it, but the point, the point is just that I, I ought be able to discuss it. So I have that belief. I'm not clear why that belief is false. Now, it seems like you are trying to do something that involves like realism to tell me that it's false. So you explain to me why that belief is false. Okay, well, you know my companions in, in the companions and guilt argument. So let's just skip the 
you know, skip the... Well, well no, because what we got through last time was I agree that under your definition of epistemic norms, yeah, uh, there are epistemic norms. If, I'm, if I believe that there are, you know, categorical epistemic norms, if, if me saying I don't think humans can perceive atemporally qualifies me as an epistemic realist on your view, then I'm fine mm -hmm. with that, okay? So that's where we got. So to there last are epistemic time. reasons for belief. So like if we I'll right, but wait, you just tried to talk about companions and guilt. I'm just being clear, right? Yep. So and we I'll got to the, this we, yeah. So we got to the end of your argument. We didn't get to the moral discussion. Remember, right. We so that's what that. we're gonna do right now. Okay. okay. And so and, I will pay for you this. Clear, and just to be clear, this moral discussion, we're having this discussion so that you can explain to me why this proposition is false, right? I guess so. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure we're on track. Okay. So according to the anti-realist about morality, there are no categorical normative reasons. Um, so categorical normative reason, that's something that you should do. And that should isn't a hypothetical norm. Yep. Okay. So according to the anti, and I call, I would sooner use the term non-realist, but yeah. Um, according to the anti-realist, there are no categorical norms about morality. Um, let me just think about that for a second. Um, just make sure I agree with what's being said there. So no categorical norms about morality. Um, no, so that's that's false. I, uh, I'm not saying there aren't. I'm just saying that I'm not convinced there are. So I reject P1. Because I'm a non I'm a non realist, right? I wouldn't use the term anti realist. I'm just not convinced Can of realism. Can you point me to what you mean by like where's non realism? I just I just mean that I don't hold the position of realism. Uh, well, by your definition, maybe I do because you seem to use realism in the same way that I would use the word cognitivism. But yeah, I mean, I'm well, no, I just, because the, I I think error theory falls under. Well, but 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 look, re regardless, the thing is like, if if anti realism means that one has to believe there are no categorical normative reasons, then I'm just going to say, okay, well, then I'm not an anti-realist, right? I'm just a non-realist, right? Because I'm not saying, I'm not making this claim. There are no categorical normative reasons. That would require an argument, right? I'm just saying that I'm not convinced that there are. No, but you have already acknowledged, um, oh, I see, about, so about morality. Okay. You, yeah, you understand, um, this should be. It shouldn't yeah, matter. Yeah, it shouldn't yeah, matter for the discussion. Yeah. Yeah, because the, because the thing this is doing now, I don't I use the word anti realist a lot, right? There's there's little people who will try to snipe me and be like, he uses anti realist all the time, right? He's bullshitting me, right? Like I use the word, but to be clear, like I'm not taking a position like there are no categorical norms, right? Because that it seems like that would require an argument, right? I'm just not convinced that the proposition is. I'm, I'm not convinced of the truth value of that right to be charitable. We're you know when you say that we're going to ascribe to you like something different than what is being literally said. Yes. Right. Um, I, I didn't track that. Can you say that again? Like when you call yourself an anti-realist, we look at that in the context of everything else you've said and charitably understanding that is really we will understand it as non-realist. Sure. Yeah. Just yeah. like so, when I say, for example, <laughs> when I say that you can't do something, uh, you can't represent this in logical form. I'm saying you can't accurately represent that as its logical form in the exact right, same way right. I say. But, but it, and and if in the same way this isn't a parallel this part but if in the same way i actually said something that um when analyzed literally yields a contradiction and it's reasonable enough to interpret it literally then i would grant that just like uh you did right so okay, okay. so according to so can are, is it fine to change the word anti-realist to non-realist or does that yes. damage your argument i think it i don't know we'll see We'll okay. See how it plays out. Well, because I don't it, know of any here's, other non-realist, so I haven't considered well, well, it under that framework. Well, well, yeah, because the thing is, like, all I can tell you are what my beliefs are, right? Like, I can't, I can't, like, I, the labels aren't the most important thing to me, right? So what I know is that I don't, uh, I don't hold, a, I don't believe that the consequent is true. I don't have that belief about the. Consequent. I, yeah, so I understand so, what you're. So, 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 well, just to be clear, so that means kind of like one of two things. If it's if it's possible for you to be an anti-realist under your interpretation of that word and um, just be unconvinced of the consequent, then that proposition actually would become false, right? Because it's saying you're an anti-realist and you have you therefore you believe that there aren't categorical normative reasons, but it's possible to be an anti-realist and just not be convinced that there are. So if we if we take anti-realist to include, you know, positions where you're just not convinced, then that proposition is false. But if we don't, 
then I would just say, I just would uh, ditch the label anti-realist and just say, I'm not convinced. So it, it depends if you want to use anti-realist to include positions like mine or not. Right. So if, if you do, then the proposition would become false, right? Because it's not true that by virtue of having my position, I have to believe that there's no categorical normative reasons. Um, but if, if we don't take anti-realist to mean that, if we take, if we do take it to, to mean that there are these categorical normative reasons, then I, I mean, sure, we can just grant that, but then I wouldn't, uh, be ca classified under the label anti-realist. So do you understand my reply there? Yes. It's like two pathways kind of, it's like either anti-realist includes that consequent, in which case I'm not an anti-realist or it doesn't, in which case the proposition's false. Yes. Okay. Okay. I mean, I suspect the premise you will disagree with will be three. It seems like I'm disagreeing with one. Well, no, you're not really, because even if it is, because it's about knowability. So, well, we have to, what we're going to do is we're going to like keep like writing out like iterations of the argument, because I want to keep it in text and make sure that we're clear about what's being said. So do you want to take the move where this premise is able to be true, where you just change anti-realist to non-realist? Or, or or use anti-realist to mean positions where well well no if you if you do that it'll be false so when you do, look do you want to change anti-realist to non-realist um, or, or in fact see no that's I, not, I'm that's gonna, reading through this it doesn't matter yeah. which one it is okay so in fact they would wait wait so I I, I actually misspoke there so the problem um, is I don't believe the consequent there right I don't believe there are no categorical normative it reasons. doesn't matter so, if we treat it as anti-realism or non realism yeah yeah I, I I actually I was actually confused about what I was saying there I, I said something slightly wrong but I won't I won't belabor you with it so um the, the what we would really need to change is that that I'm just not convinced there are categorical normative reasons but I think that will have some kind of impact on your argument I don't think I it mean, will oh okay so now I'm gonna just do a revision here um uh, and you can tell me if it's accurate. So just give me a minute to type. You can you know, talk to your audience or something. John, John and air theorist in the, cause they're not an air theorist. Are you, uh, Isaac? Uh, no, no, I'm not an air theorist. John, do you, is this a position in the literature? Do you know? If, if you're still watching. Uh, just kind of obvious point here, but obviously whether a position is in the literature doesn't tell you whether the no, position I just is say correct. I am aware. Okay. I just ask. Okay. Although it does yep. give just perhaps Yeah, in yeah, in like just this agnost that what you called agnostic anti realism. Um agnostic anti realism. Well, it's, or you probably also call it agnostic realism. Like, I mean, I just, I just, I, I'm convinced I, I, hypothetical norms make sense to me. I just am not convinced there's other kinds of norms. I've almost got this done. One second. I just need to see the structure. Uh, there. Okay. So then this is, I guess, not R. Um, and then there are categorical normative reasons. So that's going to be. There yeah, are Mackie was an error theorist. Reasons. Why Wait. So you actually, this, this argument's a bit redundant. We can actually just get rid of, uh, this is what I did on my stream when I talked about this too. We can just get rid of, um, we can get rid of, uh, the conclusion one. Cause like, you can just get to conclusion two. Like you don't, you don't need conclusion one. It's just superfluous. What is, right? what is Brindle Bear doing? Oh, um, it's actually kind of inappropriate of him to, you know, type up shit while we're trying to stream. It's supposed to be, he's an admin, so he can type in there. I think he's just giving, you know, he's talking about anti-realism. If we want to bring him on later, you're welcome to. He's a smart guy. He, he he's knows the literature. Um, okay, so just with your argument, you understand conclusion one is superfluous, right? Like, we don't actually need that to have a valid argument. Uh. Well, I mean, but we're using it. Well, no, we do need it because that's how we get um, the final uh, proposition. I, I don't think you, here. I'll, I'll show you. We actually have a logic button here, so I'll just I'll show you. Um, okay, therefore not p. Um, okay, and then uh, okay, we're, I haven't adjusted the wording yet. I've just formalized. You um, you do need it so because what, what, what moral anti-realism well, only comes up in the first proposition. But, so if you but, remove but it, you, 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 no, I, I, okay. Well, I might be wrong, but we're just going to do a check with the logic bot because I'm I'm pretty fucking sure about this. So so first of all, 
Um, uh, here, and I'll, I'll I'll type it up twice. Once with the form that I'm suggesting, and once with um, once with your. Wait, what form. did you get rid of? Um, You're not getting rid of the first proposition. No, I'm I'm not. I got rid of the first conclusion, but I'm gonna I'm gonna type it up again with that conclusion, and then without, and then I'm gonna show you. Oh wait, uh, so you're I'm, saying I'm, you can remove the first conclusion? Yeah, and it'll still be valid. I'm. Oh, I thought you were saying we could get rid of the first proposition. <laughs> no. Well, no. I mean, yeah. Obviously, the fourth just follows from the fifth. It's not. Um... Yeah. Like, I mean, if we if we just check this argument right here. So, okay. So let me uh, let me just do a, a quick little check. So you, you might think this is cool. This bot also can do crazy shit like generate truth tables and not just like the truth tables for WFFs. It can actually generate truth tables for arguments. I'm gonna be honest with you. I I don't know why you would use it. I think it's a little silly. That it might. Um, you don't think you don't think that it's useful for people to be able to like there's also the rem there's tons of benefits like i will argue the utilitarian case for this bot fucking all day with you you know how many people have learned prop logic from this bot um it even it can auto generate infinite quizzes and grill people and they get like seven minutes per question and if they pass with a high enough roll they or uh, sorry score they get a roll it's uh it's useful so um here one second we're just gonna do a form check but there are there are our... oh, okay Oh, what did I just do? Uh, okay, and then therefore, I fuck. But I, I just I don't know why we're second. we can we both know what we're doing. I don't know why we're just sitting here watching you do this bot thing. Oh, this is just this. I is don't need a proof. Hard. I understand. It's very well, clear. yeah, but it's just for people watching. Okay, so just one second. Therefore, not p. So that should work. Yeah, so that's valid. And if we were to put in uh, that other conclusion too, it would still come out valid, right? So it's just the other conclusion is just superfluous. I'm just I'm just showing why for people on stream because it's still valid even after we remove that conclusion, right? Yeah, we, but we it's agree. only there to just make it more clear about what's going on. That, that's fine. That's fine. I'm just I just want to make it into simple people speak. Okay, so now let's look at the, okay. So now I need to do the part where I adjust that part about categorical normative reasons so let's let's fix that up so according to the anti-realist about i have morality, to go in 30 minutes by the way just so you know okay okay well um um yeah he's uh, well yeah so according to the um yeah according to the anti-realist he is you know uncertain whether categorical normative reasons uh what exist um okay and then we gotta adjust the phrasing in p2 so i'm just the consequent of p1 is the same as the antecedent of p2 so i'm just standardizing that in the same way um okay if one second here let's okay if according to the non-realist about morality um he's uncertain um <laughs> it's kind of weird phrasing like i'd rather write it like this so if one is a non-realist about morality, then one is, well, let's just say one can be, right? Can be uncertain whether there are categorical normative reasons. Okay, that's good. That's how I would like to phrase it. I'll run it by you after. If one can be uncertain whether there are categorical normative reasons, then there are no epistemic reasons for belief, but there are epistemic reasons. Um, uh, okay, there are epistemic reasons for belief. Get rid of the but, um, and then conclusion. Therefore, um, it's not the case. Therefore, it's not the case that one is a non-realist about morality. Okay, so there, I understand what that's saying. Does that look good to you? Yes. Okay, so if one is a non-realist about morality, then one can be uncertain whether there are categorical normative reasons. If one can be uncertain whether there are categorical normative reasons, then there are no epistemic reasons for belief. Yes. There are epistemic reasons for belief. Therefore, it's not the case that one is a non-realist about morality. Right, right so agree you, that's, that's accurate? Yeah, and Wait. you grant premise three. Well, well just before that, do we, I just want to establish- you Yes, would I do, true. yes. Okay, uh, I'd rather go premise by premise before going through three. Well, but we can just figure out yeah, that if, premise if, two is if, what you're going to disagree with. So. Yeah, if, if three by epistemic reasons, again, if I'm qualified as, well, whether there are or whether I believe there are, well, slightly different. But but yeah, I mean, I, I, 
I believe there are if all that means is that I'm uncertain that we can perceive a temporally. But let's just go. Can we just go from the top? Because I'd rather just go through it one by one. OK, so OK, so the first premise I think I can now say is true, right? So if one is a non-realist, then one can be uncertain whether there are categorical normative reasons. OK, sure. Uh, so I can agree with P1. Good. OK, so now P2. If one can be uncertain whether there are categorical normative reasons for belief, then there are no epistemic reasons for belief. I'm not convinced of that. OK, well, let's discuss it. then. Why okay. do you disagree? I'm just not clear why it's true. So a categorical normative reason is something that you ultimately ought to believe, right? Regardless of, you know, from, from this, from our, again, it's always from the human standpoint, of course. Uh, also, I have to go pee. So can you give me like two minutes? Yeah, that, that's fine. Okay. Pee break. I'll be right back. Go. Okay. Rem's taking a piss. Do you want to talk for a second, Bryn? Hello, hello. I heard. I saw uh, you trying to type shit. If you want to talk before Rem comes, I'm gonna yeah. boot, I'm gonna boot you out when he comes back. So I don't want to be unfair to yeah. him. Yeah, the only reason um I posted that is he seemed to be calling on someone else for a reference in the literature to your position. And we talked about this before that you at one point had your view described as minimal non-realism. So I was just providing the SCP article that that like seems to capture what you're talking about, which is just like a rejection of categorical norms. I'm not even rejecting them; just not convinced they exist. Right, you're right. Something like that, right? That's sort of their their view. Um, okay. Which is just that there's just you know it's non-objectivism or not convinced of objectivism, but you still hold cognitivism. Um, and you're not an error theorist. Sort of. Yeah, I'm not an error theorist. And That's yeah, right. I mean, I'm subjectivist, so obviously it's a cognitive position, cognitivist position. Yeah, I just didn't want the uh, the other person to call on, say no, and make it seem like this isn't a position in the literature. It, it is. I mean, a lot of people accept cognitivism, reject error theory, but aren't convinced of categorical norms. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, it's where I have been at for a while. I mean, I just, I don't understand how, like, I don't know what a non-hypothetical norm could even look like. I've never been able to yeah. understand what people are talking about when they try to talk about non-hypothetical norms. Yeah, that's actually something I think Mackie sort of gets at, is that it's really hard to construct norms categorically. Yeah, I haven't actually read Mackie. I mean, I probably should. I should should know the big error theorist's work, but... I yeah, I don't, think, I, don't think they, I don't think they consider ethics to be like the chief error theory work anymore but it's really short and it drives a lot of problems into especially content morale. what's going on here oh uh, i was just talking with Bryn. okay bye Bryn. i just want to keep myself entertained all right okay. what's up so yeah premise two i'm not convinced of premise two can you hear pardon hello oh hello? So, yeah sorry can you hear me hello yeah Okay, yeah, no, I just I was just talking with Bryn while you were away. He, okay. you know, the guy who would post that stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm not convinced of two. Okay. All right. What's what's the art? So yeah, if you can just give me like a syllogism, that would be great. Where the conclusion is two. Well, I mean, if, just think about it, right? So categorical normative reason, it's going to be something that is objectively and necessarily things that we should always, you know, tend towards. Uh, that's, of course, what it means for something to be categorical. It's not just an if-then, uh, you know, it's not a hypothetical uh, uh, norm. And no, I don't really understand them. I just understand they are should statements that where the should isn't a hypothetical norm. That That's all I'm really understanding there, and I'm not convinced that that exists. Right, one second, we just so, so So why is it that me being unconvinced whether those exist means that there are no epistemic reasons for belief, right? So it, and on this, on, well, like what, what is an epistemic to, reason? What you're, what you're committed to right now is, in fact, that there are no epistemic reasons for belief because I am uncertain that there are categorical normative reasons. Right, but you've acknowledged that there are epistemic reasons for belief. Wait, but, but one second. Um, so one can be uncertain whether there are categorical normative reasons. Do you agree that I'm uncertain? Yes. Okay, well, then there are no epistemic reasons for belief. By modus ponens, you're going to be just committed to there not being epistemic reasons. So I think you have to change the phrase. Well, no, what are, you, what are you talking about? Because that's not... 
Okay, so just look at premise two and picture chain. I can write it out, but you and can you just get picture R, and then you get not R, and then that's a contradiction, no, and so you're wrong. Wait, no, I I have to show you something. Look, if we just take premise two, right, and we just modus ponens on that premise. One second. Yes, you get R. It's one second. Um, P one, P two, do 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 do. Um. Okay, one second. One can be uncertain whether there are categorical normative reasons. Um, do, 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 conclusion. Um, therefore, um, okay, so that's that one's going to be Q. And then, or I guess I should maybe just make this straightforward. P implies Q, P. Um, therefore, Q. So look, if we just do modus ponens on that premise too, right? If one can be uncertain whether there are categorical normative reasons, then there are no epistemic uh, reasons for belief. You agree with P1, right? Mm -hmm. And you agree with P2. One can be uncertain whether there are categorical normative reasons. So there's a phrasing problem here because this is going to commit you to saying that there are no epistemic reasons for belief. So there's some no. kind of problem. What are, you, what are you talking about? Well, look, it's just modus ponens. If one can be uncertain whether there are categorical normative reasons, then there are no epistemic right, reasons and, for but belief. I, I agree with that. Oh, oh, no, no. But I disagree yeah. that someone can be uncertain. Right. Okay. There we go. So, yeah, now I am, um, I'm, okay. Well, right, that, that yeah, just, like, because I'm a realist, well, that just well, necessarily isn't. Yeah, like, now, I'm not going to try to hold you to it because I could tell it was a misspeak for, from the start, but you um you originally said that you agree that I'm uncertain, right? And if that's the case, I, you I would agree just that you believe getting, yeah. you are uncertain. Mm, okay. Well, I I asked. I said I am uncertain. Do you accept that? And right. No. Said, no. I yeah, thought you but, meant like you yeah. believe that you're. That's uncertain. fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. So I'm just gonna. If that's not the issue, it can just. Well, actually, maybe I won't do that. Maybe I'll leave it in case we need it. So, well, if one can be uncertain whether there are categorical normative reasons, then there are no epistemic reasons for belief. So I don't understand why me being uncertain about categorical normative reasons means that there are no epistemic because reasons. Because they're for uncertain belief. if there are any epistemic reasons. Because an epistemic reason is going to be normative, right? So, you know, I don't, I have to say, I'm not tracking. So what I'd like you to do, um, because I think that when arguments are bad, people try to talk in natural language, like no offense. So just give me a syllogism where the conclusion I, I, is premised. That's, that is the bar. And I will be sticking to that. I want a syllogism. The issue the is we, I don't have a lot of time to do this. I only have like 19 minutes left before that, I have that, to go. That's okay. We can pick up later, but that's what I'm going to need, right? I don't, the thing is when people, my general take is when people like, I mean, some of your but friends, it's also, but it's just like, wrong um, because if yeah. you look at any sort of philosophical wait, literature, people do not do wait, this, Isaac. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. So when I, when I talk to people sort of like who have these kind of views, right? Like there, you know, some of them like perspective sophistry. Um, I mean, there's some others. Can you, okay. That's um, not, I, I, don't, don't do that when someone like, Oh, I, I will, I will a hundred percent do that. But you, your disagreement has been noted. Um, now people like that, and I think you do a bit of this, um, although you're definitely more rigorous than that guy. Um, there's, there's a lot of he has natural, a masters. He knows more about this than I do. Yeah. You, well, your thinking sounds clearer to me. Um, his thinking is like a bird's nest. So you have a different methodology what, for doing philosophy than he does. I stick to my claim. Um, so with uh well just one second so what i think happens with people like this is they have these like half-baked beliefs right where do you think like, all you, philosophers well, are like this then one, one, just one second okay just yeah, go ahead. Second. no I, i'm not talking about all philosophers i'm talking about a specific kind of person so i think there's a specific kind of person i could maybe start telling you what the conditions are for being that kind of person but they have they have these kind of like half-baked arguments where it's like they're, they can't actually bottom out their infrastructure and propositions that I agree with, right? And just by asking for arguments, they often crumble. So what I need you to do, Rem, is I do need a syllogism that concludes with premise two. Okay. Now, if you don't want to... Now, now I wait. So I understand that asking someone to syllogize their thoughts... Yeah, it's ridiculous. Well, wait a second. I understand that asking someone to do that on the spot is not a fair demand. So if you want, if we want to end the conversation now and then pick it up where you come with a syllogism for P2, that would be fine for me. No, it's just, it makes this conversation just so, because I, I want to point out the fact that no philosopher does Don't care. this. Don't care. What I want is a syllogism. I, I care very much about the inference structure being valid. Also, why do you keep saying and... syllogism? Just say... Wait, argument. you want me to say argument? Yeah. Syllogism isn't like... Okay, we don't well, have syllogism. I mean, Those are Aristotelian. 
Oh, wait, well, wait. We can still call an argument to syllogism, if it's I, but it's not really. If we want to be, if we want to be nitpicky, like you are uh, nitpicky. Well, wait, I mean, I don't, I don't know that that's the case. I think we can still refer to it as a syllogism. Well, when people say syllogism, they usually are talking does, about syllogistic doesn't... logic. Yeah, it doesn't have to refer to like Aristotelian categorical. Well, if we want to be literally, <laughs> I mean, it's well, like I mean, I just, that's I a subsection of okay, arguments. Okay. They, it's okay. not. Well, I, I'm not. I'm not sure that you're even right about that being uh, standard terminology. But let's just grant it, right? Because I don't care about the terminology battles. I care. Like you love to do that shit. I don't. I can't even oh, tell you how little. I, one second. I can't even tell you how little I care. I just want to know what the words that are being used mean, so I can tell if what's being said is <laughs> uh, coherent. So just to be clear. Um, your premise too, I'm not convinced of. I think, that and I can probably... tell you why it is convincing. But you want it in a right. very unreasonable fashion. That's going to take can, us like 20 you, hours you, to go no, through you, one, by you, one by one by one by one by one. If you want to try, if you want to try to convey it in natural language a few times, you can. But if I'm not clear on what you're saying, we need a syllogism. That's just how it goes. Uh, but again, I just I do want to point out that literally no one Don't does care. this. Don't can't, couldn't tell you how little I care. What I care about. So is why should I be meeting your what, what I, demands here? Maybe this is a reflection of I'm your not, poor understanding I, I, of the field. I I wouldn't say that you should from your perspective. From my perspective, you should because it's my preference. That's all I take should to mean. Um, now, when, why don't you just uh, go read when, up on these things first, and then we can have the discussion? Why is the well, onus well, on well, me wait, to do this? Wait, that's 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 big talk from a guy who, you know, as far as I can tell, doesn't actually have an argument for that P two. So but I do. It's just it would t it would okay. take hours to go okay. through it one by no, no, one, and no, I'm not no, no, interested that, in that, doing that's, that. That's fine. So if you want to try taking a crack or two in natural language, I'll try listening. But if I get the vibe that I don't think what you're saying is actually clear, I am going to request a syllogism. So do you so want to try? So if you if you don't. But we know that's going to be the case because you aren't familiar with the no. field at all. No, it's we, like, we don't. are we going to say, we, like, if, if a quantum no, physicist shot, tries to explain quantum shot, mechanics no, rem, to me? Rem, no, it's shot. a perfect I analogy. Those, I need a little one of those stream buttons for when I talk to you. I do, I too, little... for when you cut me off when I'm speaking. Fine. Fine. Well, we'll ding our fucking bells at each other, Rem. Yeah, sounds when good. I, so there, let, let, me, let me make this just clear, okay? You could complain about this to the ends of the earth, and I would And you care. don't care. Fine. Not even, not even. But remote. your demands here because, are very because, unreasonable. Because what I care about, because what I care about is if I actually agree with what you're saying. That's what I care about. Yeah, so and go read order, up a bit and, and then we order, can have a discussion. And in order for me to understand if I agree, I need to understand what the inference structure is. Now, when the inference structure is loose <sighs> and it's in natural language, it's hard to understand. And that's why I want it formalized. It's not so. If you, if you want to, if you want to, issues. if you, if you want to try, if you want to try in natural language, I am happy to charitably listen and try to understand what you're saying. But if we take like three or four shots and it's just unclear, then yeah, I want a syllogism. So do you want to try the natural language a few times? We might be okay. able to just get through it. Maybe you can make it clear. Okay. Okay. So essentially, if I have a categorical normative reason, okay, it means that it is something that I always ought to tend towards as an agent. That is what I must be driven to as a rational agent towards, right? So if I have the categorical normative reason that I should help uh, an old lady across the street, then necessarily I ought to do that. When I'm presented with an old lady, I have a moral obligation then to I'm, cross the middle not street. Understanding. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm already lost. When you, what does it mean to say that it's a moral obligation or you should? What that, is that when you are mean? in that situation, that is what you do. That Wait, but that's just, that sounds kind of like descriptive. Are you just saying that that is what someone will do? Or are you saying some kind of like should thing? Does does anyone in my chat not understand what I mean? Just... Uh, that that's a cheap shot. I've got you saying things you can't explain. Well, so I feel like that's going. a bit. I feel like this is a very intuitive concept. It's not intuitive to me, Rem. So let's just keep going. Let's try to. When be I say, for that. example, you ought to open the door for them. What does that mean to you, Isaac? What I take it to mean is that it's your preference for me to open the door. Okay, and but from that there is a there is a it's a what we could call a it's a prescriptive claim, right? Well, what do you think you mean when you it say means that? that you as an agent ought to act or in the future will act under a certain type of um, under a certain type of request, and in a sense you have a certain obligation to do so. As now, in, so there's, and you can like you can understand yeah. that in terms of 
I'm expressing my preference to, okay? I understand that you can appreciate that as being, that is my preference to do so, but you just then reject that there is actually some sort of always present driving force behind those prescriptive claims. You are saying, well, well there is nothing driving that other than well, someone's preference yeah, to or to not, not do that. I'm not, I'm not clear that I'm saying that. I'm saying that all that I take ought to mean is, is you're talking about your preference. preference if, right. If, if, if you think it means something else, I'm happy to hear it. Right. I'm just, I'm just not aware. Right. Of it means that there is something above and beyond a mere preference. There's an actual, like, do like reasons, right? When I perform an action, I have a reason for doing so. And we can then look at that reason and ask whether it is justified or not. We, oh, we, we, we have to go into the language. So when you say ought, what do you mean? Relative to a certain set of ends or norms that we have, we That's determine. A, Pardon? That, that's a, that's going to be no, hypothetical. No, it's though. not. No, 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 no. If it's because... relative to a goal, it's going to be a hyponorm. No, that's not true. What? Don't you take a hyponorm to be a norm? Of no, no. Well, we're talking about want... reasons. Okay. So when you say categorical normative reason, an instance of that is like you. No, no I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm trying lady. to paint the picture for you so that you understand what I mean by a, something that is categorical yeah. and normative, right? Well, so when I do, when I perform an yeah. action, right, and I do it, I well, can, I can then, ask you the question I need to ask to understand it. Because what what's tripping me out is your use of the word ought, right? Because I understand by categorical. Right. Then I'll explain reason, it without the use of the word now, ought. Now, now, I, now I remember a bit. One second. Uh, well, the, the, okay, you can do that, but. Remember a bit about your position, which is that you're not, you don't want to commit too hard to what the norms are. You just want to commit to them existing. And I wouldn't try to, you know, well, that's not true. There are certain norms that I absolutely agree to. One second. Wait. Yeah. But when you talk about what I've heard you say multiple times, and I wouldn't try to like destiny you on this because he did this to you. And I don't think he appreciated why it was unfair. He asked you to like defend the existence of some specific norm instead of just defending that there exists a norm. So I I wouldn't ask that, but I just need to know kind of what you mean by the norm. So one norm could be like you ought, you know, help the old lady across the street. Now, I, I'm just I just made that little comment there about the destiny debate just because I, I understand that you might think there's more defensible norms than that. We're just going to say like this. Let's say this is an example of a categorical norm uh, or, or yeah, categorical normative. Uh-huh. You know, yeah. OK, so um, now. I don't understand. Now, I understand that claim to be like you ought help an old lady across the street. I don't know what ought means. So you could clarify that. Or if you want to use alternate language, you could, you know, do that. So what? how do you want to deal with that? I mean, ultimately, I think that the issue here is that you don't have this. You you reject that there is a because there are primitive notions that we necessarily have. Right. And the idea of a prescriptive claim, a driving force behind a prescriptive claim is something that I would defend as something just native to experience in the first place. Just. It's, it's a very factor of our experience. I, I'm um, not clear, though. What, what I'm asking is when th- you th- that's say... That's what I mean by it is, in a sense, an intuitive notion. You're asking for a definition of something that really can't be defined in just like, uh, for example, okay. space can't really be defined. Well, well yeah, but, but the thing is, with things that maybe would be hard to define, like just like the qualia blue or something, like if, we're, if we say experience, like like our language kind of bottoms out around there, and like you just have to see blue to know what blue is, right? And it's like the that. same thing with like yeah. a, a moral prescription. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm fine. I'm fine with that. That's fine. But in that case, you can actually be like, here, look at you. Point up at the sky and say, look at that. No, you see no, that? no, no. That's not true. That's not everything is ostensible. Okay, but I'm just give, I'm just giving sort of uh, example here. So the thing I'm trying to convey is just that. I don't know if I need a definition. You could just provide me. You could point to the thing. In That's my, what I was trying to do. Second. I'm trying to provide wait, you with wait, examples. Wait, you could you could point to the thing in my experience that is what you're referring to. Yes, and that's right. what I'm trying to do. Okay, so I just I just want to be clear. So when you say categorical norm, moral norm, um, we're talking about some kind of statement like you ought help the old lady across the road. Now I'm trying to understand what that ought means. Now, if you, I'm not going to hold you to the language. If you want to move away from the ought language and give a different phrasing of it, that's fine. Or you could define the ought such that I understand it. Which would you rather do? I would rather just give you an example and we'll see if you are able to just like pointing it to the sky and determining well, what's blue. But, but I need, I, I'm fine with that, but I need to understand how the example relates to what we're talking about. So we're talking about a categorical moral norm, 
right? So it's, I take, I, I mean, I need to know an example statement of a categorical uh, moral norm, right? So I was fine using the old lady example. Do you want to use that example or is there another that you'd rather use? It's just, I know that the fact that you're not even getting this is going to make this conversation. That, that, that could be because your view is incoherent, right? Well, so no, I just, I, I've never you, met anyone yeah. who was incapable yep, of who's, doing this. I, 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 I tend to be precise, right? And sometimes when you attack something with a lot of precision, someone will realize that there's like fundamental things they're saying that are just confused, right? So it just as much as you can sit there posturing, right? I can, I can do the same thing back to you, and that's not interesting. So let's just talk about what makes sense. When you say there's a categorical normative reason, I, I'm not clear what the fuck you think you mean, right? So you have to make me understand what you mean. So we had an example, right? Um, and again, you might not be fully committed to this being a categorical moral norm, um, but it's like an example we, we're going to like use whatever. So one is you ought help the old lady across the street. Now, if we're using that example, my question is, what do you mean by ought? If you want to use a different kind of language than ought, you can rephrase. Or if you think the example is problematic, you can switch to another example. So there's do, different pathways You do there. realize people generally are able to under, within a linguistic Don't care. community, people Don't care. know. What, what do you mean? That's how words have meaning. <laughs> well, I need to, under, if you want to help me understand the meaning. Do you Ram, speak a different I'm, language than me? Ask yourself. Maybe, because I don't understand what you mean. If I were to go up to anyone and I ask, what does it look, mean do you for think, me to do tell you, think, you you ought to do this? Rem, Rem, look, do you think that I'm being dishonest with you? Do you think I'm pretending I not to know what you mean? I, yes, I, at this point I do. Okay, well, I don't know if we're going to be able to resolve that because I honestly do not understand what you mean. Well, then... Uh, like, uh, let me, maybe I can say something to make you think I'm being honest, okay? Not that I should even have to do this, but... Do you, if you want just a sample into my perspective, I know this perspective will trigger you, but if you want to know like how I actually feel internally when I like talk about these things, okay? When I hear people like moral realists using these words like good and bad and ought and stuff, I'm not clear what they mean by those words. If by those words, they mean something other than this is my preference, right? Now I understand they think it's fucking obvious. I've had tons of moral realists say it's fucking obvious. No, no, right? no, but this is but wrong. This is wait, wrong, ask yourself. Please, I thought you wanted, I'm just telling, I'm, I'm, it doesn't matter. I'm telling, I'm just telling you, it's not wrong. I'm telling you what I think, right? It's, I can't. But even emotivists I, who yeah, hold your view wait, are capable of understanding this. Wait, wait, but I thought that, look, I'm. Tr you think that I'm being dishonest. I'm trying to diffuse that thought, not that I should even have to, just so that you understand why I'm being a bit pedantic about it, right? Because you think that's motivated by some fucking dishonesty, and I really do not, okay? So from my perspective, when I talk to moral realists, I find that they use words like ought and good and bad, and I don't really understand how they're using them. Now, I'll often ask how they're using them, and you know, sometimes they'll give a definition, and sometimes they'll just say it's fucking obvious, right? And I know there's people who agree with you that it's obvious. Like, I talk to Insup sometimes. Uh, he, he thinks it's just obvious, right? But honestly, Rem, it's not obvious to me what those kind of words mean if they don't refer to preferences. That is truly and honestly where I'm coming from. So well, then look, if you want to help I, I me think, understand it. I don't yeah. think we're cut out to have this conversation with each other. Well, I don't, I don't think you, I, do okay, but I'm going to fire a shot back at you. Okay. You're saying Fine. you're not educated enough. I'm going to, I'm going to say, I don't think you can actually coherently define what you're talking about. <laughs> That's fine right? because I've talked to enough emotivists who basically hold the view that you do who are more well, than capable of getting mean. past this first step well maybe i'm just because okay, the maybe, notion maybe i'm just stupid rem like just why don't you just like look are you just saying you don't want to try to help me understand what you mean well yeah partly because it's it's very frustrating okay. for me but okay. ultimately well, if yeah. i can't i'll try again okay right so if i perform an action okay well, you right. don't look, you don't have to have a conversation you don't want to. It's just, it's, you understand that. Well, I'll try one more time. Just let me try one more time because yeah, I do have to okay, go. But, but yeah, let me say one thing, but just. You've been saying, this. you've talked okay, like 90% uh, of the time. You, okay. And may, maybe, maybe I have, but I'm the one who's confused here. So look, someone, someone, I just want you to understand this. Okay. If two people are talking to each other and one of them is invoking terms, the other guy doesn't understand. You can think I'm being dishonest all you want, but assume that there's no dishonesty going on. Surely you understand one guy saying to the other, look, I need to know what you mean to continue. I, yes, I so let okay. me try, okay? Yeah. Please, okay. yeah, go ahead. So when I perform an action, like let's say I, I actually, I walk an old lady across the road, okay? And someone asks, oh, well, why did you do that? What does that mean? It means I'm asking for their reason as to why they did this. I'm, I'm looking for an explanation of what is it that went in into their mind about 
well, what what prompted them to do this at the end of the day? What motivated them? Okay. Um, when ultimately that question is going to come down to whether, well, I could say, for example, um, I did it because I wanted to maximize, you know, bas- the u- basic utilitarian uh, proposition, right? That is a that is a primitive reason that exists within what is called the motivational set, okay? And to say that that is categorical is to say that that reason must exist in every single person's motivational set. So I have just given you a definition that does not employ any sort of ought or should. So does that make it clear to you? I think that actually is making some progress towards making it clear to me. So okay. if we have a, so let's just try to connect that to the language. So categorical normative reason, let's, so all we mean by that is a reason that's part of the motivation set. I just take that to be the set of reasons that motivate. Alexa, stop. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So, so what you mean, let's just make sure I'm understanding you. Cause I'm not sure I am. You, when you say something's a categorical normative reason, what you mean by that is, um, that it is some, uh, some reason that's always part of the it's human always part of the motivational set you said, which I take to just be the set of things that motivate. Right. So yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just some reason that always motivates you. Well, yeah, it always motivates you, but you can have overriding. But motivation. sorry, do you do you think that there are oughts though, or you don't think there are oughts? Because well, but okay, so but the the further thing we have to say then is well, then we ask well whether or not that reason was justified or not, okay? And then well, the answer but, will but be you understand why it's important you use ought because this is all so that you can falsify this proposition. I, yes, I, I understand. So let me just further right. explain so we can highlight it better. Okay, so I then ask you, well, are you justified in is that reason for walking your lady justified or not? And if it is a categorical normative reason, the answer to that question will always be yes. It is always justified under every single circumstance. It is a justified moral reason to do so. Okay, okay but I have to understand when you say this sentence here, I ought be able to discuss metaethics despite knowing nothing about uh, metaethics on a big platform. Um, the ought there, I thought the whole reason we were going into this is to understand what that ought means there. So you're going to have to like change that sentence too or something. I didn't, right? What like, did, I look, well, I'm just trying to express to you what a categorical normative reason is. Well, but, but, but wait, you the original discussion is you're trying to explain why this belief that I have. Well, I let's be forget that. Let's just focus purely on this argument because I can't wait, keep going wait, back and one, forth one, here. One, one second. So you're dropping the claim that that's a false belief because I'm going to hold you to that shit. That's for sure. No, it's just we can put that aside and well, we can come back wait, to that after but, we've done but, this. But no, I, I think that's a very um, a good angle to get into this, right? So Well, I disagree. When, so let's just not. Okay, we can okay, look at this well, argument well, by itself. Uh, well, one, one second. One second. Okay, well, we can look. We can, I'm happy to go over the argument. But just the point is, um, I don't, I can't, I'm having, tr- when you say that that sentence is false, right? And I say, well, I mean, I don't understand how it can be false. I just take ought to be my preference and that is my preference. So I don't see how it's false. And you say, you know, that's not what ought means, right? Then I need to understand how you mean that word. So like, what do you think you mean when you say ought? That's what I think is the the thing that you struggle with. What do you mean by ought? I just explained that to you with reasons. Okay, so ought means that there is a categorical normative reason? Well, uh, it depends what kind of ought, but yes, the claim is ultimately that there is an ought that is always a categorical normative reason. Yes. Okay, so I ought be able. Ought to means that it's ultimately uh, under a chain of hypothetical reasons. It bottoms right, out in a categorical normative one. So one second. So if the ought in this sentence uh, doesn't refer to preferences, and it says. I ought, you know, and that's some categorical normative reason, be able to do blah, blah, blah. I don't even believe in those reasons. So that's not actually even a proposition that I believe. So you can't say that's a false belief. Okay, look, it's three. I have to go because it's... Yeah, but I just got you, Rem. Like, look... What do you mean you to... just got me? Well, I just got you, right? I didn't so even listen just... to what you just said because I was looking okay, at the time. Well, well let, me, let me walk you through it, right? The claim, the belief that I have that's false is apparently I ought be able to discuss metaethics despite knowing nothing about metaethics yes. on a big platform. Now, I take that ought to just refer to my preferences, right? And I, I mean, it is my preference, so it seems fucking true to me. Now, you're telling me 
that by ought there, you actually mean something other than my preferences, in which case it's not even a belief I hold because I, I mean, when the only way I'd affirm that that's a belief I hold is if you're talking about preferences. Why so, do I, it, you don't have, it doesn't have to be a well, belief that you have. Well, well, wait, you, one second, you claimed that that is a false belief that I have. Now, if the ought refers to preferences, I don't see how it's false. If the ought refers to something other than preferences, then it's not a belief I have. So that's a why trap does it have to be a belief that there. you have? What? What? Because, wait, what? <laughs> why does it have to be a belief I have? Rem, what, wait, what are you talking about? Rem, Rem, the reason it has to be a belief I have. Wait, is I can you, reframe the, what where the gotcha yeah, is. I'm not even yeah, understanding the, what you're the saying. reason why it has to be a belief I have is because you claim that this is a false belief that I have. That's how we got into this whole thing. The claim right? is false. That proposition wait, is false. No, no, you wait. Yeah, but you said that I have false beliefs, right? So this proposition here, I ought to be able to discuss metaethics despite knowing nothing about metaethics on a big platform. Yeah. That's a false belief. That is to say, I believe that's true and the proposition is actually false, right? Mm -hmm. I assume that's what false belief is. Mm -hmm. um, now, what I'm saying is that if the ought there refers to- Are you to clicking or something? There's a clicking. Oh, um, it might be my mouse. Is it that? Yes. Sorry, I'll try not to do that. Um, uh, I'm going to fucking put one of those noise gate things on that mic. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, with, the, if, with this proposition, I ought be able to discuss meta ethics despite knowing nothing about it. So if the ought there refers to preferences, then yes, that's a belief that I have. And it just seems clearly true to me that that, that belief is true because it is my preference, right? Now, if the ought there refers to something other than preferences, then it's not a belief that I have. And then when you claim that's a false belief that I have, no, you're no, just no, wrong because no. that's not a belief I have. Wait, just so no, the, again, this that, is just well, the logical wait, form it's, thing. It's, it's one it's one or the other, though. It's so just to be clear, it's <sighs> either the ought refers to preferences and I have the belief and it's clearly true or the ought refers to something else and I don't have the belief, in which case it's not a false no, belief. No, again, I this is, I cannot believe we're back to fucking You're deontic stuck. logic. I am not stuck. It's you are stuck. If you were to rephrase that in deontic logic, look, the claim that would be, be hold what on, is, is, let, let me look, explain just, to you. Well, look, look I, can, I can leave, you I can said, literally you write said this I would be able to look, answer look, this Rem, with the preface. Wait, wait, okay, let me phrase it more oh carefully then. God. Because, because I could literally give you a syllogism. This is like just straight up clear as day it's a deontic statement look, the do, look, the look, ought that, is a fucking that, operator look i'm just asking does that ought refer to my preferences it's an operator yes or no please rem does i, that I say it doesn't you believe okay. that it does okay. but okay. i don't wait, believe that it does right but it's right, an operator right. okay okay but you understand if it doesn't refer to my preferences then that's not a belief i have <laughs> again if you were to reframe the argument it would be in the operator so the claim that i disagree with is whether or not you have that ought if you have a different definition of ought that's a font like you can absolutely say that and you can have the belief but that's a second statement about whether or not ought so when i make that statement it is always within my view of what ought actually means it has nothing to do with your own personal preferences Wait. okay so but you're in a bit of a corner now because if that ought doesn't refer to preferences oh that's not a belief i have so then that's not an example of a false belief Dude, but that's not true. What do you think a false? Like again, you believe that you are able to, that you ought to be able to. You do You should this. admit that I got you on this point, and we should move How on. How can you possibly? Like it's very, what? It's very obvious, Rem. Either the ought refers to preferences, and it is my belief. Okay, let, let's let's write this out. Or the ought for us. Or okay. the ought refers to something else. In which I case, believe, I don't believe it. I believe. Let me let me write this out. Okay. I and then I have to go. I ought to be or I I believe the claim or the proposition. Okay. I believe the proposition I ought to be able to discuss yada 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 yada. An easier okay. Hold on, any, let me let me let me write it out, okay? I and could, then I, could I believe it. oh, let me finish the you, proposition you, yeah. and then we're gonna do the the operator, the operational applicator be able to discuss blah, 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 okay? So that that's that's very, very simple. I, I could okay. easily tell you formally what I mean here, right? So I disagree the, that the proposition is true. Look, Rem, just please just understand this for a second. If that ought refers to preferences, then I believe that, right? If it doesn't refer to preferences, then I don't believe it. Do you follow that, just those two implications? Let me write this out then. Let's like do. P implies Q, not P implies R, right? Okay. So if obligation is a preference operator, then well, it let's turns talk out about ought. Let's talk about the ought. I want to stick exactly to the language, right? So if that ought refers to preferences, then yes, that is a belief that I have. 
If that ought does not refer to preferences, then that is not a belief that I have. We're talking about whether the belief that you hold is true or false. We're talking, right. wait, it, what, well, kind of. You, what you're claiming is that I believe this proposition. I ought be able to discuss metaethics despite knowing nothing about metaethics on a big platform and that the belief is false, right? So you're saying A, that I believe it and B, that it's false. Now, if the ought refers to preferences, it is true that I believe it. Um, and I'm definitely not convinced that it's false. Wait, I'm if not concerned ought, about your psychological ought, if state, if ought, if ought, Isaac. If the, ought, if the ought doesn't... I don't give a ought, fuck about your if psychological the ought, state. If the, ought, if the ought doesn't refer to preferences, then it's not a belief that I have. Wait, so what, what the fuck are you talking... I don't belief. give a fuck about what you actually believe. I worry, I'm worry. i concerned oh, about whether is... the proposition itself is true or false. No, what you started with was... Oh, um, are you... You're being uncharitable Ram. again. No, Why no, would no. I give a fuck about you, what you, you actually end up believing look, at the end Ram, of the day? Ram, you can't just call uncharitable when I get you in the corner. Now, you are really in the oh, corner. Oh, you really got point. me. Uh-oh, well, well, I can't... Why don't, why, don't uh -oh. You, why don't you stay then? Maybe you can get out of it. Because it's completely irrelevant to the conversation. No, no, no. I've... We're worried about the... The, the actual you're, you're like what it. ought means and oh, now we, you're doing yes, this weird we semantic thing about whether or not oh, i actually are. hold the belief what, that this what, is well, true wait, or not wait, when wait, i'm concerned about whether wait, the belief wait, is true wait, not no. about whether it's true or false that you hold the belief no no no, no, no. you claimed that i have a okay. false belief right and this was the example of that false belief and the stream will yeah show. someone says he knows you have to go and is trying to get a cheap and, shot and lmao the, That's oh i'm, ha oh, I'm happy oh i'm happy to talk to you tomorrow and if you want i'll even not upload this and then stitch it together with the conversation we have tomorrow or the next time right i have no interest in getting a cheap shot that ends with me winning if you want me to this is so another, stop, isaac I'm, I'm isaac diffusing, i have a question I'm diffusing that lie i'm diffusing that lie if you want me to wait for the conversation to complete, then stitch it together with the next half and then upload that. I'm fine with that. So there's no interest in a cheap shot. Okay, now, Isaac, I want, I let want me ask you a no, question. No, no, Rem, wait, I want you to follow this because I have really got you on this point and you aren't appreciating it. Okay? Then let me ask you a question what, to show no, how one you have it. One second. Look, right? you, remember one we had second. this conversation look, earlier look, about look, me being able to say you, something you, to you. you. I, but I'm the You're one saying you have a gotcha. You got. Something. I've got me in a contradiction. So now well, let I me need, explain wait, why it's not a contradiction. Stop. stop. Look, every you oh, can't just yeah, weasel see. like this when I get you in the hole, Rem. Okay, now just look. You're doing the that, thing that we talked about Rem, earlier. Okay, uh, well, I'm doing the thing. I don't fucking care. Rem, if that ought... You're being uncharitable. If that ought refers to preferences, that's oh a belief God. I have, and I don't think you can show it's false. If that ought oh does God. not refer to preferences, it's not a belief I have, so it can't be a false belief. It's one or the other. So does it refer oh to preferences? Look, just answer. Does it refer to preferences or not? You can tell it's just a basic syllogism and you're going to get fucked here. So does it refer to preferences or not? Uh, no, it doesn't refer okay, to Okay, so it's not a belief I have. Great. So it's not an example. It doesn't of matter. Belief. It doesn't matter. What? Because well, I'm concerned. I am. Hold on. Belief. Hold on. Hold on. Because. <laughs> I got you. Oh, you're... what a laugh that was. But look, regardless yeah. of whether. Hold on. The ought is not going to change depending on who it is. It is always necessarily like you, you have this perception that this ought is, you know, a personal preference, but it You're actually is not. You're just rambling. You know, I what do you mean? I'm not rambling. If I believe, look, look, look if I hold the claim that an ought claim just, is a normative reason, can I explain to you? Without you want, talking over to me no, over want, and over no, again, I want. I want. I. Have you just want to do a gotcha. Ram, You've got to. So let me explain Ram, why it's not I, a gotcha. Wait, wait a, just wait a second. I'm not interested in an explanation why it's not a gotcha. I want you to reply to it, right? So oh, I am replying wait, to you, but one, you're cutting me second. off. Well, once you're cutting me off before I can finish <laughs> delivering the syllogism. Okay, so just uh, stop. Now look, if that ought refers to preferences, it's a belief I have. If it doesn't, it's not. And if it's not a belief that I have, then that's not an example of a false belief. And you were wrong when you said it's a false belief I had. It's simple, right? Now you said no. That's you, wrong. You said one second. You said that it's not. Um, it doesn't refer to uh, preferences. So by modus ponens, that is not a belief I have, and therefore it's not a false. It's not an example of a false belief I have. Right? That's wrong. You're wrong. Oh. Because oh, okay. look, so the, the reality is, is write it out. I can formalize. No, no, it. I, I can explain daylight. this to you. I can explain. You have the perception that th there is no if, if or or like it is always from my perspective. Ought is always this categorical. It has nothing to do with personal preference. Okay, and so your belief that you ought to be able to do this, you are mistaken in the belief that it is a personal preference. It's actually not. You actually you are operating under the perception that I uh, of ought that I have ascribed right that it is this categorical normative belief you are mistaken in believing that these prescriptive claims are reflective of a personal preference for something so no you do actually i guess have this genuine belief but you are mistaken about what the term ought means within that sentence
There okay, you go. So I'm not. I'm not. Well, you if didn't the ought get there, me, if the, Mister. If the ought there. If the ought there refers to, well, let's just be clear, right? Because I told you, you might be able to get out of it if you try, right? What do you and mean try? I, have, I obviously am not. I'm not concerned so about your psychological let's, states, let's Isaac. Clear, let's it doesn't matter clear, what you actually Rem, believe. I'm concerned be about the clear, truth or falsity of the content. Let's just be clear, Rem. Let's just be clear. Okay. Now, if Ugh. the ought, if the ought there refers to something other than preferences, right? Then. I don't believe that I have that belief there. Well, no, I understand, but that's the whole argument. Okay. The whole so argument is about what ought means. So when you say This is why this is I, so fucking stupid, because I don't care about what you actually believe ought means. Okay. I'm concerned about the content okay. of the belief, which I said at the very start of this okay. when you said I gotcha. Wait. But which are is you bullshit. That I, are you claiming that I have this belief that Absolutely. I ought to be able to? Dis- yes, of course, because okay, that's, we're okay, debating about okay, what it means. Okay, that okay, what ought okay, means. Okay, okay, okay. Then now, what does the ought refer to there? I, I, well, that's what we've been trying to discuss about what just, just categorical what normative it, reason means. Okay, now just look. Well, okay, make, but this is the separate define, discussion. Just no, no, no. Just define rem. Stop weaseling. Just define ought for me. Okay, what does it mean? That Ought, I've, I, I gave you the example with, you know, walking the grandma and there always being, in a sense, a reason that can be justified. The, an ought ultimately has to bottom out in a categorical normative reason, right? Okay. And at the end of the day, these categorical normative reasons are going to be uh, a reason that exists within our mo- uh, a motivational set that is that someone is always justified in having. Okay, so you agreed that I'm uncertain whether there are categorical normative reasons, right? Well, I think you're mistaken in what you believe ought, what ought means. Right, but just to be clear, um, you understand that I'm not convinced that there are categorical normative reasons. Sure. People are mistaken about what is in their motivational set all the time. (laughs) Okay, okay. I'm mistaken about my own motivational set. But but the thing is, whatever, what I'm mistaken about, that's, that's the belief I have, right? So... If this ought refers to a categorical moral norm, a thing that I'm not sure exists, yeah, yeah. right, then it's not the case that I believe this proposition because I don't currently have the belief that those things exist. Yeah, I, I genuinely, well, again, this right? is why I was saying I'm not concerned about your explicit psychological state because that's a useless, it doesn't, it's completely well, irrelevant. What I'm concerned is with the content of the proposition, I said, and that's why I wrote wait, this but, out on my stream. Wait, wait a second, but the in claim, proper the form, claim, <clears throat> the claim was that I have false beliefs and that one of those beliefs is that I ought be able to discuss meta ethics despite knowing nothing about yeah, utilizing the correct form of ought, which I believe yeah. I'm trying to explain to you that belief would be false. Whether or not you actually believe that definition of ought right now is irrelevant to what we're trying to discuss. This is just a stupid gotcha. Well, well, no, no, no. Wait a second. So if that ought refers to a categorical normative reason, a thing that I'm not sure exists, then I don't believe this proposition. Again, I've already told you, I'm not concerned about your psychological state. Okay, okay, wait, wait, okay, but, but wait, but wait. Who okay. gives a fuck about what that okay. is? I don't give a fuck about what okay. that is. Wait. I've said that over wait. and over wait. and over again. Wait, wait, okay, but so you grant that I don't currently have this belief. I I grant, well, depends on what you want. If I, I, don't, I, I don't grant that you that believe. I, I don't. Yeah. I grant that, again, I, this is irrelevant because yep. it doesn't matter. Oh, no, it's relevant. Yeah, no, ahead. it's not because we're arguing about what ought means. That's ultimately the dispute. It, just, no, no, that's that's part of the... That's no, not it's not. It exactly. doesn't matter because we're, I could give you any yeah. ought. We're, we're, ter- we're determining what ought means in order to understand if that proposition is a false belief I have. But please, just... No, but we again, the, I already told you that what look, you believe, I don't give under, a fuck about. I'm not wait. concerned with that. <laughs> okay, but, but wait a second, Rem. So you would grant, though, that I don't currently have a belief that I ought be able to discuss meta blah 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 if the ought refers to a categorical normative reason. You understand that I don't have that belief right now, right? I understand you don't think it matters, but you understand that I don't have that belief. I believe that you I, I genuinely I actually believe that you have this sense of ought that I'm ascribing to you. I, I genuinely believe no, it might not be what, conscious. It's, just, it's about whether I believe that I have that sense of Yeah, belief, and I believe right? so it's when a, when I when you say that I ought to be able to do this, I think that grounds out in your cognition in some sort of categorical normative why, reason that you have you mistaken though? i am answering i am saying that i do genuinely believe that you believe that you're just mistaken about how it actually functions wait so one second 
if the ought there refers to categorical normative reasons, a thing that I'm not sure exists, oh, right? And it's not the God. case that I have a belief that I ought. Look, Rem, it's just I don't. It's understand. just the stupidest just, semantical bullshit I've ever discussed. I, I think I think you are saying that, but I don't know that you have a way around what I'm saying, right? Well, I've made now, very clear what once, I mean. Once, one second, I want to work through this, okay? So I have he, to go. I'm already ten well, minutes over. Okay, I'm fifteen well, minutes over. Okay, well, you eighteen can, you, minutes. Okay, well, you can go whenever you want, but let me let me. Okay, just well say then this. I have to you go can, now, and we will well, discuss yeah, this in a further okay, well, time. You you can have the it's last night. Okay, well, you can have well, no, the last no, word. No, no, I just, I, I want to make well, very okay, clear okay, to you that yeah. this is a silly semantical thing. Uh, and I, I say that. Okay, well, I don't think it's, here, you can have the last word, but this is what I'm going to say, okay? So this sentence here, I ought be able to discuss metaethics, blah, 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 okay? If that ought refers to something other than a hypothetical norm, then I'm not convinced that I believe that, right? I don't believe that I have some categorical norm to do something because I don't currently believe those exist, right? Do you, so... Just please answer me with a clear yes or no. Do you accept that I currently don't believe that uh, no. non-hypothetical norms exist? You think that I believe that yes. non-hypothetical? Okay, well. <laughs> I, mean, I think I think moral statements necessarily motivate. Okay, well, I mean, if the ought refers, to, I, I mean, all I can tell you is what I believe. You're just saying I'm lying now. It's like what a religious. I believe that no, I believe that a moral God. motivation necessarily will motivate you. So if you believe that to be a moral thing, that is a morally okay thing to do, that will necessarily motivate you. Wait, in which case, talking, that is a belief that sorry, you hold. Sorry, I think I think you might be equivocating. Are you talking about whether I have the categorical norm or whether I believe that I have it? Whether you have, that's all I've okay, been concerned about. I've said over and over again, I'm no, not no, concerned. One second, one second. I, I'm How many times have I said to you there's about you're not there's giving a fuck about your psychological state? There's an, there's an equivocation, right? Because what we're talking about isn't if I have the norm. What we're talking about is if I have the belief that I have the norm, right? Because the belief in question. And is how many times have I said, I Ram, don't give is, a fuck. I, I want, I want you to go through. This no, is tech. Okay. This is t I'm done. <laughs> I can't, I can't do it anymore. He's just fucking with me. He's fucking with me. Oh my fucking god. I don't I don't care what you believe your norm to be. I care about whether that norm is actually justified in the first place. Why do I care about whether you believe like my definition of a norm is correct or not? Hey Aerotheorist, do you want to call? Are you up to having a discussion, a post uh discussion analysis of this? Rem crumbled in the last 30 minutes. What? Made an interesting point. It's possible the argument is incoherent, not simply the other person is too ignorant to comprehend. Rem really struggled to define ought. I, what the issue do you have with my definition of ought? Oh my God. No, we couldn't get off the, Okay, no problem, John. We couldn't even get off of frickin' what ought means. What was that? Amazing content for the first stream of the year. Thanks, Carlos. I don't know about that. Just, oh my god. Oh, all the Ask Yourselfers came over from the Discord. Ew, right. Yeah, I do have to go. I have a... I have a thing in 13 minutes. Sounds good, John. Did you want, John, did you understand what I meant when I was saying I don't give a fuck about your belief? I care about the content of your belief, right? I care about the truth or falsity of what is in this operator. That's it. And then there's a separate point about this always actually referring to my notion of ought. Yeah, hey, look, if you want to subscribe, you should totally subscribe. Why would ask yourself think that his psychological state was the point of contention here? I don't know why. I think it's because he's just he constantly tries to get a gotcha, right? When I'm clearly I'm not I'm not concerned. I'm not at all concerned about exact exactly Aretheus. And I wanted to go and I but I know he doesn't know anything about moral motivation. So how could I talk about the internalism externalism debate with him if he can't even grasp what ought means in the first place? Ah. <sighs>
I tried to get that at the end there with, um, you know, a set of motiv or a motivational set and it always being present in the set and how it is always necessarily motivating you. Um, yeah, another time would probably be best napkin. Uh, yeah, look, if you want to sub or donate, you can do that. I'm going to be streaming more often now. This is the first stream of the year. Uh, it was quite... Um, very, very frustrating. And most people don't think we have transparent access to our beliefs. Exactly. You might be mistaken about what you believe. Exactly. Internally, there is an actual belief that I have that is necessarily motivated by this categorical normative reason, but we are mistaken about what it actually cashes out in at the end of the day. That's why I think that he's actually incorrect at the end of the day about what he believes. But more importantly, it's completely besides the point. I don't care what he actually ends up believing. Um, I care about the content of the belief claim itself. Yeah, I can believe I'm drinking water, but have a mistaken belief about what constitutes water. Precisely, yeah. I should have made that more clear. But I... After three hours of that, I was so... Hey, thanks, Arch Lion. I, the, there's no, I can't... There's no way for me to dominate in a discussion with Ask Yourself. Um, his attitude towards it makes it just so incredibly frustrating to engage with. And his notion that I have to get everything to a syllogistic form is just so... Hey, thanks, Doc Manhattan. So, like, no, like, look, let, where's a, a book near me? Look, R.M. Hare's The Language of Morals. Okay. Analytic philosophy at its best. Best. You see any, see any sil syllogisms in here? See any syllogisms in one of the most famous ethical books of the past century? No, you don't. And if I were to grab any of my ethics books on that shelf, none of them have any sort of syllogistic form. That's not the way that philosophers speak to one another. You should have gone further in ought as an operator, especially pointing out how descriptive claims can never cash out. Of I can't because I try to explain things and he cuts me off and then he yells at me. No, you have to answer yes or no. Uh, the place I see most people obsessed with formalizing their arguments is in philosophy of religion. That would not surprise me. Hey, thanks, Face Fokker, as well. Really? Wow. Yeah, honestly, the SCP page for Deontic Logic is pretty good, Step Dust. As someone who just graduated with a Master's of Science in Philosophy, I've never once been told to present my uh, view as a syllogism. Oh, temporal conditions. Okay. I don't do any philosophy of religion. I never have. I probably never will either. I, d I feel like that was just a waste of time. You know? I think that was an ego project for ask yourself saying of yourself, I got you. Into I know. I, th I talked to him specifically early on that just let me try to be more charitable in try to be charitable in what I'm trying to say, right? Like, it's possible I might have misspoke and he misunderstood what I was trying to mean. But instead of trying to constantly corner me, why not let me actually clearly explain what I'm trying to tell you? But it's constant gotchas, 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 gotchas. I don't do that with him. I don't. I try to be charitable to what he's saying. And I try to explain what I'm saying. But as, uh, you know, as soon as he, in his mind, something fires off and he just won't let you go. Oh, no. Ask yourself is 100% worse than Destiny is. Destiny allows you for breathing room. Uh, and is and it's more charitable than Ask Yourself. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. Oh. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree, Nashi. Where are you gonna go? What do you mean, where am I gonna go? Oh, I have to go meet someone for a 
university type thing at 10 p.m. It's an event. To start off the semester. I, I do have to go, actually. Look, everyone, for... Uh, what was unacceptable? I was unacceptable, RJ. Yeah, exactly, new guy. Oh, I see. Yeah, I do. I do genuinely have. I it's at ten p.m., but it's five minutes away. I give you a bit late just so I can wrap up the stream. Okay, look, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna be streaming tomorrow, though likely. Uh, but I'll. I'll. I'm also. I'm gonna upload this to YouTube as well, and uh, I will talk to you guys uh, tomorrow.